um, you know, that, that you want to make sure that it's being properly attributed. So there's still a, a gatekeeper. There's not a system in place yet to but allow for that to happen easily. Well, there, there's different databases, right? So the Okeanos uh, data set is available through um, NCEI uh, in various different capacities from video to multi-beam to uh, you know, even environmental profiles. Um, but, you know, a different organization might have a different repository and different means of, of accessing that data, but it should be uh, you know, publicly available. Um, or you know have as few barriers as possible to accessibility. I'm just curious as an educator, we love looking at using um, you know real data in our classrooms, and sometimes we find the layers to get to it or the way in which it's stored not as accessible for our our younger learners. And I'm not I'm talking you know high school, community college, and even entry college. So, just curious about that. It's something I've run into as well as a scientist. You know, it's, it's not always very intuitive. You know, different entities might have data in very different formats, and uh, you know, that's that's always been a issue for scientists as well. It's not there's not one standardized format to how this data is collected. Um, so it's it's definitely something you can commiserate with. Yeah, a growth area. Yeah. We'll check back in in five years. See where we're at. There has been some uh, movement in the deep sea biology world to try and standardize how we annotate video, for example, um, which I think is, is hugely important um, to better, you know, create a system that, you know, if I say something is coral species one, you know, and if it's not well, if it's not a described species, then someone in another country or another ocean uh, doing a study that's similar can know, okay, you know, that coral species one is probably the same as what you saw in this study over here. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, even those types of things where you know, trying to make the data products useful is still in its infancy. It requires a lot of coordination. As it, these are big, complex entities, and, you know, the science is, is quite complex, too. And then you have to consider, too, that there are the, the data um, formats and data uh, volumes are changing all the time. We're going through a very rapid pace of change in how we access and store, analyze data. So it's it's tough to have a system and then you know it changes every few years because uh, just the nature of how we collect the data changes. The struggle is real. And it's a it's a system. It requires a system. It's not an easy task. Well, and it's it's easy to overlook though sometimes. There's an entire field of data scientists, and they're on demand right now. So, for our pre-career people, something to look at if you're really interested in data. Yeah. Um, look at the data scientist career path. Agreed. It's it's very important. This is a nice little community here at reasonable densities and bathypathies, metallogorgia, um, golden corals, bamboo corals, uh, some paragorgia, and maybe hemichorellium species in this area. It's pretty neat. I would say that this density is probably associated with this kind of we're just about to crest the top of this small knoll, uh, so it's more likely than not that there's probably good, really good flow conditions around here that allows us to support this. Uh, can we actually can we zoom down a little bit uh, or tilt down to this colony right here and take a look at that? Looks a little odd. Oh, I see. It's just that the polyps are closed. But 
What do you think about these? Down here. Now you know. Yeah. We've collected Paragorgy in this area before, which this uh, colony is. Try tell me. One very similar, in fact, in 2019. So I, I think uh, collection won't be necessary for this particular target. But it looks like it has a, a zoanthid associated with it. Okay. Good zoom, thank you. All set here on captures. Okay. Just while we're zoomed in tight. Oh, I don't know. You can go now if you want. I, I, if he needs to reach us, we have a phone here in the control van. He might call call the control van. <laughs> um. Yeah, these look. These kind of look in place. Yeah. You looking for another rock? No, I've got my eye open always. That's our default setting is rock mode, rock hunting mode. <laughs> is that that's your default? Yeah. <laughs> He's a changed man. Got to check those boxes. I don't know if I'm going to say this name correctly, but what is a guillot? That is a seamount with a flat surface. Did I pronounce that correct, though? Guillot. Guillot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, flat topped uh, seamount. Underwater mesa. An underwater mesa. Guillot. I said guillot. <laughs> guillot. Um, this pebbly-like surface, are they lava flows? Uh, yeah. We've been seeing a lot of pillow textures, um, which have been really nice. Um, but yeah, so seamounts are essentially little tiny extinct volcanoes. And are these well cemented? Yeah. Like cemented well cemented together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really hard to uh, break pieces off of these guys. Yeah. Sometimes you can look for joints and cracks and such and get the claws under, but most of the time we end up looking for float or loose pieces. Yeah, so uh, FYI, front row, um, oh look, can I take a look at that uh, bamboo coral? Roger. Is that one of those branchers? Possibly, possibly. Take a look, so we want to zoom in on the branch point there. Roger. FYI, otherwise though, we're about to head down slope uh, quite a bit, it's going to drop off. I don't know if we want to tow yeah, out and then that. drop back down, but we'll Take a look at this. So that would be boring. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, can we grab a snip of this? This looks to be uh, like the sparse branch we're looking for, kind of branching right above the node point there. Bridge, yep. Just a little bit off the top, you know, kind of like we did when we came on watch. Right there. Just a, snow, a small snip. Pole position? I have a hard time seeing the nodes with all the polyps, but... Yeah, you can you can just barely see through the flesh, these dark bands. It's 
space of the state. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tim, zoom in there. Yeah, that's great. All right, I think that's good enough imagery. Now we can go for uh, clipping off the top. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to move up there. Okay. This is coming over you, so I'm going to move up. Yeah, okay, right. Came down there for the zoom. Oh. Care which branch, Steve? Uh, the taller one is fine. Okay. Challenge. Or is it easier to do the lower one? You choose. It really doesn't matter. Uh, no, we should be able to get the taller one. It's going to move the ROV a little bit. Still too close there. It's a tail landing, so it's not real stable, but you might have the room up there. So, yeah, I think you got oh. that. Okay. Go ahead, Bridge. So if that other coral sample is stuck in the slurp pose, um, does that prevent us from doing any more slurps? Not necessarily. Uh, this actually might be like a kind of like a pipe cleaner, I guess, if we send it through. But mm -hmm. there's also the chance that it could get double stuck. Right. <laughs> Highly likely. Highly likely, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, they could both come through. Is that enough? Thanks. That's yeah. perfect. Great. Yeah. So is that what you want to do, Steve? Is do the double slip? It's a risk, box. but I would really like to not yeah, lose our slurp pose. So that's a yeah then? Yeah, let's do it. Roger. Maybe it'll knock it loose. Living on the edge. Let me uh, come around a little so we're not okay. on that close to that coral. Okay, should have room there. Getting lots of armpit scratching exercise today, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's painful. If we had a 4K tilt, that would be sweet, eh? We'll it see would be it great. Three cameras. <laughs> it would certainly help. Gently wab it. Huh? Yeah, we gently wab it. 
Yeah. It's coming, I, I think that's... You ready? Yeah, I'll turn up the jam a little bit here. Okay. About 75-ish, 70, 80. Come on, double tap. Oh, there it goes. Well, we got that sample. I know where the other one is. <laughs> it's still in the hose. <laughs> just went around that's, it. That's very surprising. That yeah. is, that's just weird. I mean, that, that coral is not small. It should have brushed it out. It that's be. all right. Should look at three again. I think I swear there's an extra piece in three. Roger. All right. Do that as we. I'm gonna have okay. some tracks here. Go pushing the wall on her. Right. chance look in three if you want yeah sounds good I'm just coming up for when you come under me right. we're Bridge gonna be now. going downhill so I'm probably gonna stay under you so if you want to tilt straight down okay uh, when you're ready uh, five zero meters bearing zero four five please Stay like close to close to you, so you don't have to. Oh, hello, Friday Harbor. Thanks, Washington. Hello, Orlando, That's Megan. Florida. Hey, uh, Megan. I was going to say Megan. <laughs> Friday Harbor. Yeah. Hello, Orlando, Florida. Oh, this is a marine biology class tuning in right now. Come down. Okay. Come down ten. Oh, wondering if you could describe deep sea corals biodiversity for this area um, or, or generally I so Gen I think general but yeah. yeah so much like the shallow ocean where you have uh, you know coral reefs and these th types of things we find that there's a, a really good diversity of corals in the deep sea as well uh, on screen right now you can see a couple of examples there's a golden coral uh, called Metallogorgia that kind of looks like a parasol with a, it's on the end of a very long stalk with a, a brittle star associate, very uh, high density. After after I get it situated. Yeah, I, I need that starboard camera for now. High so. density uh, polyps. And there's also a another type uh, of black no. coral in the lower left corner called Bathypathies. These are a couple of examples of things we call deep water corals. Uh, but they come from a variety of different lineages, uh, black corals and, and gorgonian sea fans, sometimes even stony corals. Not on this dive yet. We're a little bit too deep to see any stony corals, although we did sample one of the solitary scler sclerotinian cup corals. Um, but in this part, in these parts, we typically will find uh, a pretty wide diversity of deep water corals in this, uh, at these depths. I think so far we've just seen in the past uh, past couple hours or so since we came on watch probably around a dozen species um, down deeper we did see uh, a pretty good diversity too um, of uh, large bamboo coral large high density bamboo Push coral gardens a bit for us, in the vicinity of 2400 meters about so even though we're not seeing those uh, corals anymore, it, uh, at these depths we find that a lot of uh, you know, th this seamount is kind of like a mosaic of habitats. And you know, at some depths you might have some species, and then they disappear, and they're replaced by other species shallower. So in the entire seamount, if you were to take it as a whole, there's probably upwards of a few dozen species of corals just on this one seamount uh, at various different depths. Cool. That's a that's a lot of diversity. Oh, I'm getting a message from Megan Landbase. 
saying that we do actually have a request from Dr. Ballard to get some high definition frame grabs of the lava flows in this area. Yeah, yeah. Roger. Uh, I never got my disc back from last time. Uh. Are you talking uh, 4K high definition or? Just uh, Zeus. I def I, he's probably talking about Zeus. I def okay. Nation. Okay. Got it. Got confirmation on that. Yeah. Just uh, try and light it up as we go down the hill here, and you guys can mm -hmm. take some grabs. We're going downhill, so I'm kind of going backwards here. It'll be somewhat disorienting, but well, you're kind of lateraling, lateraling along here. Can you zoom in on the rock surface uh, in this area here? Yeah, can do. Or something that looks like that. Dan, are you okay if I grab your starboard rail cam for a minute? Uh, I still need it. You can grab it while we're landed here. Okay. Okay, go ahead and then uh, zoom there, Tammy. Maybe that's what he's talking about, high definition zoom. Yeah. So the the request was to zoom on one of these uh, kind of buttrital textures in the rock here. Uh, this is all iron manganese crust. I've been seeing this since, uh, can we uh, kind of pan over a little bit and fill yep. the shot? Instead of oh, I see what you want. Yeah. yeah. This is, I think, uh, the pebbly structure that's been talked about. It's pretty solid stuff. Um, you know, we've been on the lookout for uh, more uh, nodule-like structures as well, but there haven't been any at this particular site. In fact, we haven't seen any on this expedition at all so far. But uh, yeah, this this type of stuff is quite common. We've been seeing this since our on-bottom uh, depth at around 20. Are we at 2,800 meters thereabouts? Uh, we we're on bottom, so it's fairly dense, uh, pebbly texture. So are those mini manganese nodules and, and baby manganese? No, I, I, yeah, you, you can poke it if you want to, if you have time. But I'm, we're pretty sure that that's pretty hard, hard stuff. Yeah. So. I poke it. Yeah. If you do that, clever. Sam, you can stay zoomed in there, and you can use the 4K camera to move the manipulator in, so you'll, okay. you'll get this zoomed-in shot of the hmm. titanium jaw coming into the picture. Total Hollywood shot. Okay. And the ship's just completing a move. So. What's that, Sam? ship's just completing a move. Roger. Nice and slow. Beautiful. Doing a little tap. Just rub a finger on one of the. Ooh. Yeah, pretty hard stuff. Just scratching your nail on the rocks there, are you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was nice. just thinking about. <laughs> I was just thinking about the. Nails on the chalkboard as she's doing <laughs> that. Do it one more time so I can cringe. <laughs> oh, that's a horrible sound. Okay. I think that's All good. Right. I Great. captured that. Okay. You didn't even make a dent in it. Nope. So there's, yeah, there's some so, some, some fine grain uh, botryoidal textures, coarse I grain botryoidal te textures here. Uh, but this is most of what we've been seeing here. How would I describe this? Okay, we're going to move it on. The rock texture. Yeah. On top of this uh, Botryoidal. Got it. B-O-T-R-Y-O-I-D-A-L. Good to keep moving? Yep. Bridge now. So, so we, yeah, every, every time we've been coming up these yep. knolls, uh, we've been seeing certain parts of these knolls are yeah. set yeah. Yeah. The, the sediments yeah. fully scoured away. And we're actually about Thank to head you. down into a, a valley, a little bit of a valley that has, might have some sediment pockets. Um, and that's where we might expect to find nodules, for example, uh, in areas that are current scoured, but 
uh, you know, have areas of potentially high uh, crust precipitation. Got it. This area is a little bit less uh, sediment draped than, uh, for example, where we came on bottom today, uh, where it was you know, sediment everywhere and just very small amounts of exposed rock. It does look a lot different. Like, I noticed the change. Who's that? I'm just going to uh, turn and look down the hill for a minute here, Steve. To yeah, no, that's get, great. Yeah. Um, Argus is winning the race. <laughs> it's actually not a bad thing when we're going down the hill. Oh, as you turn to look, they're curious about, our viewers are curious about how steep the cliff sides are. It looks like 45 degrees angle, or perhaps even steeper. Question from the Netherlands. It's pretty steep. Um, you know, we don't really know the the slope, uh, the instantaneous slopes uh, on these seamounts until we get down here. But we have kind of broad average slopes from the bathymetry that we take with the multi-beam system. Um, so those slopes for this site ranged between. Uh, you know, flat on top of these peaks, uh, you know, to 60 degrees on the slope portion. So something between uh, probably 20 and 60 degrees is what we experience on any given slope on average. Uh, sorry, I'm just spinning around. There were some rocks behind us there. I couldn't resist. I'm going to look back down, Tammy, and you can zoom in just a hair past the jewelry there. Thank you. Are those the sand waves that Emil was talking about? Yeah, yeah. sometimes when you get um, either water movement across uh, sediment or you have uh, areas of the seafloor that you know, might have um, internal uh, waves absolutely. impinging on seamounts, uh, you might end up with these sediment ripples. If they're symmetrical uh, in shape, it suggests that they might be the product of uh, internal waves um, impinging on the seamount benthos. Those ones looked asymmetrical to my untrained eye. Yep, I would say so. I think it's really cool that everything we see gives us, you know, information about something that's connected to it. <laughs> see something interesting here? Yeah, I'm still got my eye out for rocks in this area, but uh, the past few times we tried to test them, they've been pretty firmly held in place. There's a Victor Gorgia there, your favorite coral, right? Oh, that is. V for victory. You want a close-up of it? I mean, I'm not in charge here, but... <laughs> I think it's the first one we've seen of the dive, so it can't, it can't hurt. Yep. Right there. But there's no need to uh, go out of your way if we're going to get tugged off or something like that. Um, okay, Tammy, you can zoom in there. downhill shot so not yeah, be too great. pretty but let me uh, come on come on oh, I just, just love that color in the deep oh <laughs> I got too close sorry <laughs> Fast tilt up, slow tilt down. Okay. Yeah. Great shot. Yeah. Thank you. It's a funny shot. Beautiful. I, I do like that color. It's relaxing. Victor Gorgia purple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming soon to your Home Depot nearby. I like that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, violet. Victor Gorgia Violet. Yes. There you go. Okay, if you um, slow zoom out, tell me I'll slow the way. Yeah. 
Great. Great accent color. Thank you. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. We're still, what are we, Sam? Zero, four, five? Zero, four, right? five. Roger. Gonna show up to my local hardware store with a picture of a coral <laughs> saying, give me this color. Can we match this, please? Thank well, you. If it's, your, if, you're, if it's your local hardware store, they probably know you and be like, oh yeah, it's the coral guy. Yeah. <laughs> Science Steve. Yeah. I gotta paint the bathroom in my man cave when I get home. I wonder if I could do it purple. Would that be <laughs> coral theme? Hey, it's your it's your it's your choice, right? <laughs> you get coral murals painted all over. Then every time you shower, you feel like you're in the deep ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Can I spin around, Dan? Uh. Sure, yeah, okay. that would be the right way to do it. Keep Argus in the deep water and her yeah. cup shallow. Just remember, you can't go left, Zoolander. What? Some you can't go name, left, Zoolander. More names coming in for our paint. <laughs> Visions of Victor Gorgia. You haven't seen it? No. Uh, I'm bad at movies. It's um, on my list. Where's Julian when I need him? Oh. He would understand. <laughs> <laughs> I can watch it on the transit so I get all the references. <laughs> yeah. We'll catch you up on everything. Yeah, please do. See, I have completely lost the plot here. I'm going to have to turn one way or the other. This uh, way. I came around to port. Right. Give, uh, <laughs> give me a minute. See, I, if okay. I push the stick this way, the arm <laughs> goes this way. I need to come towards you. Yeah, that's it. This is a pretty crusty area, so I, I'm not going to say we're going to stop and try every rock but if you see something that you know has you know a good you can get a good purchase on to break it off Sorry. that would be great Roger. I'm going to let you guys catch up to the ship and the ship move just completed so we have time for booking Roger. I'm going to look up the hill Slime but go star. down the hill it's just taking me a minute to work it out Kay. this way I want to look this way and Go towards Argus. Yeah, that's it. Oh. How do you spell Victor Gorgia? Just as it sounds, Victor. Victor. And then Gorgia. Yeah, Victor Gorgia. So yeah. V I C T O R G O R G I A. And there are some beautiful images available online. Yep. Keep an eye on your sonar because I'm not out in front as your feeler gauge now. So yep. Or Sam can give us a heads up when we technically stop going downhill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sam. Some fancy flying. Downhill backwards. Mm -hmm. I love it. You can come up a bit, I How think. How many miskin bottles okay. do we have left? Three? Three left, yeah. All right, the official uh, on deck time has been updated to 1200. Sweet. Roger. Thank you. Got a few more hours to play. Yeah. That rock looks loose. Am I imagining things? What are you imagining? That big rock rolling down the hill. I can hear you. <laughs> Poking and see what happens. The one under it might be. Uh, yeah. What do you think? That's some. That's some pretty good crust. Yeah, if you can break that. Oh, you think that's wedged in there and like the whole mountainside is just like that's just the top. Yeah. If you, if you pull that's that, the rock that's goes. holding up. Pull that that's rock out there. The see, if, see if the big one <laughs> rolls down onto her. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> and she's like, let's do this. <laughs> show me that technique you... Uh, kind of have to be quick, though, because you'll run out of That you other. perfected yesterday. To rock okay. Jenga. I mean, it looks like that little guy is just kind of perched there. So... Saying, pick me up. So this is the kind of botryoidal texture that would be great to get a piece of. And it's relatively free of sediment, which is good. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was a poke. It's might be able to grab it, break it off. Try to grab it. I'll have to rotate right a little to get your little fingers under there. What do want? Oh, nice grip. Yeah. I saw it move. Yeah. Oh, it's oh. moving. Yeah, there it is. Okay, one more grab. Let's do that. Oh, oh, Let's get the it. The wedge is coming out. <laughs> Oops. And out of tether. Okay. No pressure. <laughs> Dan, is that a real thing to run out of tether? Yeah, Argus is uh, still moving, so I'm coming down. It's downhill, so we can. Uh, Uh, we can come down and go ahead, get it, get it. What are you waiting for? Oh, I don't. Sorry, I thought you were repositioning. No. Nope. Uh. Rotate your jaws, rotate your wrist to the right just a little and open up. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's a good bait there. Nice. Look at that. Good chunk. Ooh. Oh. And bye bye. And there goes the boulder. <laughs> Are you, do we want to do a? Do you got a good grip on it? Spin? Uh, yeah. Two, so. two finger grip. <laughs> All right. Let, let's just stow it. Okay. Uh, if you yeah. hold it with the uh, rock up, you can rotate left a little more, maybe. Yeah, beauty. I I, I might stop there. Nice. <laughs> Very, very altered, but uh, still a good crust, it looks like. Okay, let me get my ducks in a row here. Let's see, I'm going to do this. Push this one out. Can I get the sample salvo? Right. Let's switch cameras here for you, too, as well. Okay. So you button? can put it into E or D. Okay. Whichever works. E or D? E. Go for E. It's a big rock. It won't yeah. fit in D. Yeah. Finding these rock collections so satisfying <laughs> <laughs> when that rock makes it into that too. container, it just you gives me a little thunk. Yeah. 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 Gives yeah. me a little, yeah. you know, adrenaline rush. I like this. Sometimes you have to yes. hit it twice. And so do uh. our viewers. Clap, clap. Very nice job on that rock. Well done. I imagine them at home watching like it's a football game, you know, like, yes, this uh, rock, get it. <laughs> oh, where are you going? I don't Better. Know. Just getting confused. Get it, as, get it as close to your mouth as you can. When you mic's <laughs> way out, I pick up everything around you. Okay. And not, not much of your voice. We managed not to cause the entire mountain to fall down. That was disappointing. Yeah. I was fully expecting that big rock to roll. <laughs> I was ready to run away. Ready for another ship move? Sure. Must be, nice must little must outcrop poke here. around the outcrop for a while. Steve? Uh, yeah, re I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm not going to be looking at anything more here. Uh, five zero meters Can you tilt up, on, uh, yeah. tilt up on Argus a little? Yep. Time to book it. Oh, question for ROV pilots. Have you ever observed an underwater landslide? Mm, we've made, made several 
Underwater landslides <laughs> over there. Did you, did you uh, say you've made them? Yeah, yeah. Wow. We're on a steep slope and we uh, disturb it too much. We've buried the front of the ROV to like all the way up to the zoo. Mm -hmm. It's just really embarrassing because it's hard to get the mud off after that. So there you have it, first-hand observations. <laughs> Typically, the boss is not impressed when that happens. <laughs> uh, a lot of times when we're coming downhill, um, especially in, uh, you know, depending on the how the soil or the seabed is, it, there's like a whole avalanche coming with you because you're, if you're going downhill and you're on a rapid transit, you don't have time to turn and play around like this. So you're dragging the, the back of the ROV. And uh, debris is coming faster than you can go down the slope. Which typically we don't want to do. That's why we turn around and look at the look at the hill. Cause we have some jewelry hanging out on the back, in particular our DVL, which uh, it was last year we managed to contact a rock with it. <laughs> and uh, we pu actually punctured one of the um, one of the transducers on the DVL. Ooh. I had to send it back to the manufacturer to be replaced. <laughs> oh, a couple more questions coming in. Uh, this one I'm kind of curious about too. Do any team members use the app iNaturalist? It's a citizen science app um, to add information about some of the things we see down here in the deep. I don't use it myself. Um, too many apps to <laughs> keep track of, honestly. I use it all the time on land if I'm hiking and, you know, come across a tree or a shrub or something I haven't seen before. Take a snap of it, figure out what it is. So it's been really useful, just Sorry, what, recreationally. What's the app again? iNaturalist. Huh. We I zoom on the uh, fluffy, dark s s thing. Is that a thing? pen yeah. fan <laughs> something or another? We're running out of words today. Thing. <laughs> the only thing in sight. Roger. Roger. There's a lot the of fluffy things. Thing. There's, uh, yeah. These uh, espidodiagonated cool urchins right here, uh, deep sea long spine sea urchins. This looks like a. Uh, okay, Tammy, you can zoom a bit there. This looks like a sea pen we haven't seen before. It's like I, I don't think I've seen something like this. I'd say it looks probably like a panatulid. Can you come um, down? Yes. A certain family that of sea pens. It's quite oh, a few wow. sea urchins there around too. There are a too. lot of. Yeah. Lots of sea. <laughs> A lot of these urchins. I've never seen actually the, the, them in this this density before. Hmm. Should be good for a tighter zoom there if you want. This is a very distinctive formation here. <laughs> all right, I think we're all set with this one. What is this one, um, Steve? Do it's we have a, an ID? Uh, it's a sea pen. Get a quick view of the Probably imaging as Panachula. Okay. There have been a couple of collections. I don't think we have any Panachula from this expedition, but we have it from previous cruises. Yeah. He's moving at light speed, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is moving pretty fast. So if you're... Uh, I always wanted to collect one of these 
to see if uh, see if it's really as spiny as it looks, or if they're just kind of like decorative. I'm sure they're quite spiny, but if they have any, if they're flexible or if they're rigid. Yeah. As we do the um, we've collected them before with the slurp. We just we can pull out and uh, yeah. hold on. We stick them to the end of it, and then. So use maybe that they're kind of flexible the then, huh? Yeah, I think they might be a little flexible. You talking about the sea pen or the urchin? Sea? The urchin. The urchin, yeah. Would you like to get one? No. No, so I want to. I want to so make it to uh, waypoint eight. Roger. That's what I really want before the end of the dive. Chip's moving the whole time, so yep. I'll make up some ground here. The uh, tracks down there kind of remind me of an aerial view of Los Angeles with all of our roads and freeways. Yeah, I wonder <laughs> how many years it took them to make those tracks. Right. <laughs> I don't know about these particular guys, but one of the Japanese scientists told me once that they're hundreds of years old. Yeah, they very well could be. Sedimentation rates here are you know, pretty small, uh, small amounts. Kind of the freshest stuff you're seeing is this darker, these darker patches. It's probably you know, the most nutrient-rich organic material and uh, some of the whiter patches are probably just you know sediments I saw last night um, so we were talking they were mostly foraminiferin tests but I also saw some pteropod shells in there pteropods are um, type of mollusk that lives up in the in the surface ocean and when they die their shells drift down to the bottom so those shells along with the foraminiferin shells make up sediments here do you do a preference on how we move past waypoint seven? Uh, no particular pro. You don't have to hit it if that's what you mean. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can just kind of move through it um, in the direction of waypoint eight. Sounds good. Thanks. Kind of trying to hit these uh, the steep portion adjacent to this valley, but at least if we head down into seven, we can see if there's any accumulation of things, whether they be you know rocks or nodules or something Can like you, uh, that. Tilt down just doesn't, a little doesn't bit. Doesn't look like yeah. a very good site for nodules from what I'm seeing. Yeah. Does the current uh, line that I've drawn look good for you? Passing waypoint seven? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it looks good. Bridge now. And you want to put the DSC back up for us? Oh yeah. Five zero meters zero four five. Thank you. You want your four K too? Sure, why not? So I've got a couple of, a uh, few species of corals here. We've got at least a couple Chrysogorgia individuals, bathypathies, as well as this red uh, crinoid in the middle, Proisocrinus. Characteristic for these depths, typical cast of characters. Uh, nothing really unusual here uh, that we've seen so far. Um, for for the crinoids, I'm curious, the, um, I don't know what to say, like the, fl is that orientated toward the flow? That's a good question. And can they move it if the flow changes? Um, generally, uh, they cannot articulate their stalk, at least this, this species. They can grow and adapt to the current changes, but if they need to move, um, they might move their arms. Uh, whoa. Oh, what's that animal? Somebody's moving fast. Is that another hermit crab? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this one's got a lot of those zoanthids on it. Zoom in just a bit for me, Tim. Yeah, those guys crack me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, we? thanks. So what is this one accessorizing with today? This is today's latest spring fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Deep sea is the Okay, you can push in a little tighter there. We're gonna go ahead and push in. You you laugh, but in three years, someone's gonna be wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. 
Steve, is, are your, is your lab collaborating with like New York Fashion Week, deep sea, coral inspired? I think that could actually be a thing. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not joking. Raise conservation awareness. And exactly. Protect against deep sea mining. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think they actually do fundraisers like that. Yeah, go why don't I get invited to these fundraisers? Uh. All right. Okay, move it up. Good. Thanks, Tammy. I could, I could, uh, I don't know, lay you down some first -hand cool facts them. or something. <laughs> yeah. Probably not going to be wearing that, but. Um, yeah, so the thing about the crinoid orientation, as we were talking about before, so just a bit mm -hmm. was that they typically okay. orient in a way that the flow comes from behind them. So, you know, when the flow hits the crinoid arms, it causes these small uh, eddies to form. And whenever you know, water impinges on something that disrupts the flow, it slows down the water flow. So that allows for time for the animal to pick out particles that it might like. So you'll find that a lot of coral colonies are oriented perpendicular to the flow such that they, you know, they disrupt the flow and the animal can have an easier time to pick out particles that they may find appetizing. It's like the fluid dynamics around the, yeah. I guess, the polyps in the case of the corals. Oh, look, it's a layer cake. Yeah, I've always been really interested in how corals feed um, or really any suspension feeders, there's r it's really a, an extraordinary adaptation to uh, or evolution of uh, you know, ways to disrupt flow to enhance particle capture. See a cliff, I just want to jump off of it. Coral, coral cliff. Jumping. Can you come down? Come yep, down. coming down. This is great. Nice. Some heteropathies there, maybe. Or what we were calling heteropathies recently. We're seeing more of these these sticks. This is the one we sampled before. It keeps on popping up. It looks remarkably similar, uh, each of them that we see. So I'm optimistic that maybe it's not a stolonephrin. Maybe it's something new that we haven't seen before. But um, We'll see, so that's why it's the unidentified octocoral. That's the one we saw earlier in watch, right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, the one of the first ones we sampled. Yeah. Come down. Okay. Sorry, Argus got tugged around the other way. Now you have a tether wrap, just FYI. Yeah, right. Here. Hello, Denmark. Thank you for tuning in. everyone viewing us from today all right so at this moment we're going to say hello to the united states hello canada hello united kingdom hello germany hello netherlands norway finland south africa hello thailand hello sweden hello japan okay, that's low enough perfect thanks okay Hello, France. Hello, Denmark. And hello, Australia. Got dots all over the world. Nice pieces of rock there to pick up. <laughs> yeah, big slabs. I'm going to come right under you, okay? Okay, I'm really low. Yeah, you, come you can come up a bit Thanks. now. We're closer together. I wonder if this is the these are the sedimentary features that the last watch was walk, talking about. If this is what they were saying, but I'd, I wouldn't call this sedimentary. More blocky. Yeah, it's definitely more blocky. Um, but the distinct layering, especially those thinner layers and those little slabs, it look does. more. Uh, 
slate like almost. I think that this is what they were seeing earlier. It does look layery to me. Oops. Well, there's a little sponge hanging out underneath there. That ledge oh, looks like. Good eye. Yeah. That's a weird sponge. I haven't seen anything like that before. Tighter shot of it. Uh, if, if you could, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. And push it in there, Timmy. Can that you? That is a very interesting sponge. Pop that up. Yep. I can see it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What's what's in it? <laughs> like it's inside the sponge? Yeah. Looks like there's a bunch of zo uh, amphipods. Little amphipods yeah. in there. I don't think we've seen one that kind of looks like this before. No, I don't believe we have. But I, I can't even put it to a family. But sponges are not my specialty, so that's not that impressive. Uh, I'll see if I can float up a bit for the DSC on it. Oh, you got it. Yeah, I think we got uh, one. Go mm -hmm. wide, Tammy. Yeah. Or I think we're going to leave that one be. Um, yeah. And in the essence of time, we really want to make it up to uh, yeah. the top of the seamount here. Roger, moving. That is the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. This area has lots of cracks and stuff. It's kind of interesting geological features to my non-geologist eyes. Looks a lot different than where we previously were. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason? I don't know. But how would you describe this area, Rebecca, compared to the places where we're at that were more sedimented and flat looking? Yeah, I mean, like we moved down slope and with that, we saw a change from uh, more pillowy rounded textures up above down to these more angular kind of layered features. Um, they seem to be pretty level as well. Um, which is really interesting to me. But yeah. yeah. I'm going to lose it here, Steve, unless you want to change the bearing a little bit. Uh, where are you headed off to the west? Yeah, no, I think we're. I think, yeah. You know, unfortunately, we're going to have to lose it because we're. Under. This this kind of valley or this canyon kind of curves around to the north. Roger. Um, but we'll pick it up on the other side. So, um, I think uh, it should just be a brief drop down. Yeah. Drop no. down. Coming down. 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 The the whole drop is only about a hundred meters or so, but it's uh it's significant. Right there. Dropping down. <laughs> Does appear to be significant. <laughs> oh, there's stuff living all over this wall, too. Surprisingly, bamboo corals mostly. Uh, but these look more like those pillows we were seeing earlier. Uh, come down a little faster. Yeah. Going down. Oh, shout out to you, Steve. Hello from a previous SCF. You should be able to uh, spin around now, too. Okay. Spin from around last in December. a tether friendly manner. Yep. Or no, don't worry about it. Let's see if you can spin around. Had Can the opportunity fly? to learn a lot of deep sea coral knowledge, yeah. so thank don't you for sh for Just spreading your knowledge. Of course. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get a chance so to sail together again. There you go. You gotta keep coming down. Yep. 
And then a follow-up as we're transitioning, this one's probably for Steve specifically. If someone was interested in pursuing a deep sea ecology slash biology career path, is a PhD necessary? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, you know, that's a, th there's a lot of different levels that you can work in. Um, you know, if you're interested in deep sea biology and ecology, you know, if you're interested in animals and zoology, for example, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to work in, in museums that don't require PhDs as kind of collections uh, assistance folks. Um, you know, they're really critical to facilitating you know, science um, on animals and collections that we get down here. Um, you know, I think uh, for if you are interested in kind of the boundary questions, like pushing the boundary type questions of what we know about the world, uh, those might be instances where you might want to look at uh, going into a higher education and uh, you know, graduate degrees and beyond. Um, but it's a it's a it's it's rewarding, but it's a it's a challenge because you have to you know, you're really trying to create new knowledge here and create new ways of doing things. Um, something you have to really be passionate about. Uh, but there are ample opportunities yeah, if you decide. You know, PhD is not for you. Uh, you know, there's lots of great positions that are available for. Uh, you know, even having a master's degree, which seems more and more common uh, these days in, in sciences, uh, at least having a master's degree in, uh, in some sort of scientific background is, um, is necessary. Yeah, uh, there's many, many different pathways. I'm sure everyone in this room has a different story to tell, and yet we're all here in the same space participating in deep sea exploration. Yeah. So a PhD is one pathway, but there are many, many more. Yeah, if, uh, if you are interested in ecology and, and deep sea biology more broadly, I would recommend uh, you know, academic coursework um, in invertebrate zoology um, primarily, as well as you know, general biology courses, general ecology courses. Uh, and also, not always taught in in biology departments, but you know uh, courses in in oceanography, uh, biological oceanography, physical oceanography, um, chemical oceanography, and geological oceanography. Uh, recommend all of those if you can get access to them at your university. Um, that will give you probably the most wide uh, wide ranging uh, ability background to draw from uh, as you. You know, are interested in move into deep sea ecology or biology more, more specifically. And one of the things that I found really valuable um, in my path was seeking out opportunities to participate in research. So if you find yourself at a university, try and get involved with the lab um, or organizations that are doing some of the work that you're interested in and they're asking some of the questions that you're interested in exploring that type of experience um, through. Can you, uh, yeah, that's a good heading. That's a good heading. Internships. Well, do you, uh, hmm? yeah, hold 225 for a few minutes. Okay. And what not is invaluable. Um, I'm not actually at 225. Yeah, I'm going to come back. Okay. Yes, please. <coughs> We're going to have to leave the wall here, Steve. Yeah, no, that's fine. We don't have to keep the bottom in sight here. Uh, the goal is just to get to the other side of the canyon yeah, and right. move up. It should just be a short distance, maybe a two couple two hundred five, meters at most. Okay, that's 225. Yeah. Are you good with 0 4 5 for ship bearing? Argus is spinning. Roger. Yeah, you can keep moving the ship. Roger, thanks. Bridge now. This is actually a really good proof of uh, ground truthing for the bathymetry that was collected. I wasn't sure if some of these steeper features were real or not, because we're 
on the edge of some bathymetric gaps and, and the poles uh, in the data. But uh, it seems to be really spot on, which is great. You know, this wall is, is definitely over 100 meters and straight vertical, and that's what we're seeing on the seafloor. 27 meters to the bottom. Okay. You're, you're coming down all the time still, are you? Yep. Right there. Okay, I'm happy now. I just wanted to make double, double sure we were moving away from the wall. <laughs> yeah, big batch of questions coming in here. Don't know if it's a good time, but I'm going to throw them out to the to the team. Hello from Sweden. Can creatures this deep extract nutrients from the rock? Does the rock contain any sort of nutrients for creatures to extract and get their energy from, or are they completely dependent on particulates and marine snow? What was the animal that was uh, they were Just talking about? Creatures. Creatures. Um, so here, back in the box. most of the the animals awesome. that we see down here are uh, suspension feeders or filter feeders. Wall so they're either the the using the flow the areas, so. in their surroundings to um, help help them capture particles uh, and ingest them, or in some cases they might be uh, using. Uh, uh, you know, creating their own Keep filter and cur filter huh? uh, currents yep. to force water and filter <coughs> particles from the environment. So everything is primarily derived from the surface um, food supply here. No animals are really getting energy from the rock or anything coming from the rock. Um, so all this food supply ha is derived from the photic zone and it comes down here. Got it. How steep is the other side? Same thing. Cool. Oh, a huge thank you for the career path information. That was really helpful. So. What's that? A little less steep. Right Great job, front row, keeping things in view, though. I didn't expect this, but yeah, well done. Yeah, thank you. That was all Sam. As long as we don't hit the other wall, we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely steep, but uh, well, we'll we'll see. As Steve said, uh, it seems to be pretty spot on, but lines are a little farther spaced out where we're headed than where we were. But we should be reaching a kind of leveled out area here. Doesn't quite look like it though. For these contour lines, uh, is that five meters? Should be about the bottom. Uh, yeah, I think um, okay, the look. white lines are five meters and the dark come lines down are twenty-five. Come down another Set. ten. Actually, okay. right now they're uh, white. Okay, or I changed my mind. Ten meters and the <laughs> okay. black are fifty meters. Okay, ah, that would so be a might, great time. Might change slightly see. based on what the the yeah. range is for the dive. <laughs> mm -hmm. So from dive to dive, but that's good to know. Uh, let's see, I'm going to turn the other way just to, to their management. You should be able to as well, and then we should be able to go across and uh, acquire the other wall. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come under you here, so... Okay. Ah, here's the flat part. That's the bottom. Found it. Yeah. So, not... Uh, well, actually, can you zoom in uh, in, in this area if you could, voice. or is that Sorry. too tight of a turn? No. The, the dark patches I'm interested in, so anywhere right anywhere up along here. Definitely looks like most of these rocks are probably loose, I would say, in this area, but Okay, of course, they're probably so not from this area. They're probably fallen from It above. looks so different. You know, these are, I don't know, what's your assessment, Rebecca, of these uh, rocks here? Crusty, not crusty? Not crusty, the yeah. ones that we're zoomed in on right now. Like yeah. maybe the one kind of to the left center, but I would say for the most part, yeah. no. 
All right. Zoom out. All set. Okay. Right Okay, you can come down another five meters. Okay. I'm not gonna, gonna get out ahead of you here and we can wanna go this way. You wanna yeah. Go, yeah. no shortage of rocks that here, way. that's for sure. Are we good on rocks or do you want or you want more rocks? That was a crazy question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, do we I have really room know. for more rocks? I, we I, do have more room. You just don't know where these We don't ones necessarily came from. know, yeah, where they came from. That's and good. if Coralie's trying to correlate, you know, the crust All to right. the water column properties. Good. Okay, in theory, yeah. according to Mr. Mesotech, we have another wall coming up. <laughs> yep. So I'm going to stretch it out here so. Okay. It doesn't look as Bridge radical, now. according, and that's the word on the street. Yep. Five zero meters, zero four five. You're gonna be okay going up this wall at the current speed. Sure. Okay. Well, I mean, for being a kind of a closed canyon here, there's actually a remarkable flow. Um, such that you know we see a lot of attached biology more towards the top right where probably you have even greater flow but still you're still seeing things in the bottom of this canyon like deep water corals and sponges was a little surprising one two three uh, some kind of black coral there looks different uh, that actually looks like something we sampled uh, a few cruises ago on uh, 2019. Ago? Yeah, yeah, 2019. Wait. Oh, two cruises ago in this area. Right? Yeah. Okay. It's like otherwise you skip a couple of years. <laughs> what year is it? Exactly. <laughs> Can we uh, zoom on, uh, actually, I think these are both the same. One is darker, but one is lighter. Can we take a look mm -hmm. at just both of these quickly? Sure. Can push in a little there, too. Uh, yeah, that's probably good, thanks. What? So we what? got What two, am I looking at here? Two, <laughs> two black corals here, uh, and then you've got a flytrap anemone uh, oh, on one of them. Um, but I think we've sampled these in the past. We were calling these heteropathies uh, for a long time. Um, it looks like they only have branches coming out the sides. Uh, branches are not three-dimensional, so it wouldn't be... Well, let's see. Black corals. All right. Well, th those are good images, at least, anyway. So, uh, looks good. We can move on move it while on. I look up these I identifications. Maybe heteropathies or trisopathies. I think there's uh, there's room for either in the way that that colony was uh, shaped. Oh. 
I know we collected one exactly like that, at least on two instances up in uh, Papahana Mokokea last year. So um, if we can't identify it from here, we should be able to identify it from that specimen. It looked identical. Got a general question coming in. Um, are all of us on the ship, or are we doing this remotely? Hmm. Yes, to both. To both. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on the feed three, what you're seeing is our control room. And we are, <laughs> yeah, there we go, hello. We are all on board the ship in the control room. So the control room's on one of the top decks of the ship. And you have me, communications, scientists in the back row, and in the front row, you've got our navigator, video engineer, and ROV pilots. Additionally, we are connected to shore, so our scientists can communicate with collaborators and researchers on shore in real time. Can we pop a NISC in here, please? Sure. And I'm sure there's a whole lot of other people involved in making this operation successful that are land-based. So the answer is yes to both. We're on the ship and we have an entire team of support. Like coming on, Tammy. Right. Working remotely as well. If I can find and that button. If, if you could stay at any lower, we're gonna wanna look at that sponge afterwards. Can I don't know what, what you wanna do first. Can do, uh, do the Niskin. Sure. Since we're up here. Ready? Ready. Bridge now. Pole position. Miss skin number four. Uh, yep, uh, number four. Yeah. Is, that, is that orange? I think so, yeah. Go. Triggered. Got it. Yeah. Nice Got it. Then. Looks good. Steve, I'm curious, do you have to do anything to the water samples to preserve them for your future eDNA analysis? Uh, just, just a second. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I'll go over that, sure. Um, we want to zoom on this sponge Oopsies. here. Yeah, go ahead, Tammy. And also this one. Oh, wow, that's weird. Telestrator froze up. This sponge here? Yeah. Right here. Yeah, just to zoom on that and then... Uh, the bushy coral calling to the lower right, too. Is this Wait the a same sponge that we lost in the slurper? <laughs> I, it could be the same. Um, it, there are some things about it that are different. I think it's still a ferrade. Um, but beyond tilt that, down I don't little, know. Argus, when you okay. get a chance. Yes. Not come down. Tilt down. Tilt down. Okay. Might have to Can actually Can I relaunch a uh, Telestrator here? I should probably come up. Oh, uh, you're all right. Tilt down first. Okay. The ship's still moving? Nope, ship's oh, not. but Argus okay. is. You can, uh, you can tilt down and uh, bring your head to the left a little. Have a great shot right before down. you hit the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Step off the wall? Or are we just closer than Alex because we're zoomed in? No, oh, you're close. <laughs> yeah. You're dangerously yeah. close. I'm trying to uh, think this bushy guy, Steve, or? Yeah, I was trying to see what that white splotch was inside one of those corals, but we, we can move on. We, we'll yeah, we'll right. catch the... Uh, we got a chance. Can you uh, winch now? I need two hands. Just, like, just keep coming up nice okay. and easy. You're, you're in a safe. You're 10 meters away, so you're good there. Okay. I wanted to keep the beauty shot. Yeah. Uh, you got your hands full. Uh, sorry, Steve. Which one? The bushy one. Bushy the, he one. Wants yeah. He so wants the white spot. Yeah, my telestrator is all seized up back here, but yeah, the one to the lower right, uh, very sparse, sparsely branched one. Yeah, right there. Zoom in now. Roger. Go ahead, Tammy. Just wanted to see what some of these uh, splotches were. So it looks like. Uh, 
Yeah, this one has some sort of egg case on it as well. Lower left-hand corner, it looks like one of the, what we have been in, in the past calling a Dumbo octopod case, uh, egg case. Uh, that one looks to be intact still. Squatty in there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a squat lobster, yeah. Okay, all set there. Thank I you. Do. Yeah, well, so the, I, I have been cool. seeing those uh, over the past uh, four or five hours or so, some of these Dumbo octopod cases. Mm. This is the first one you pointed out. Uh, well, it, and the previous watch is the last time I saw oh, one. Oh, okay. And so it, I thought you meant in the last four hours, our no, time together right now. I haven't seen any until just now on this watch, yeah. Steve, to get to waypoint eight, would you like to take a trajectory that runs us kind of along uh, the slope up or something that gets us above it? Yeah, I like that angle right there. This one? Yeah. Roger, that's yep. what we're on. Okay. We'll hold off Sam till I get back out in, uh, in front there. We're we're on the wrong side on a steep hill there. All right. I've, uh, I've exited and relaunched Telestrator a few times so far. It's still seized up. I'm not sure what's going on. So we'll have to talk this through in the old-fashioned way the old-fashioned way with Sam, words Sam can we get still her. got the old pokey yeah, stick, where's, the pokey stick? <laughs> yeah. where's that stick <laughs> it, may, it probably Should needs a uh, it probably needs, needs an a extension a now <laughs> where is it behind I you it's over there a couple of weeks ago um, it. maybe it needs a hard reboot the behind, stick? behind you <laughs> the stick behind you isn't it between the door and the the um, rack. Did you try its uh, power button, I'll Steve? Look. The restart the, c the computer? Yeah. Is that okay to do video? Yeah, you can do that, but okay. I also have to restart here. You can uh, tilt right. up. Restarting. Actually, I'll start here. Okay. First. Restarting. Wow. The pointy stick of science has been located. <laughs> Is it still operational and functional? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, analog. Do you need to update the firmware? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that definitely needs. Better check that firmware. You know. Nerd jokes. I usually take that thing away from Rennie and smack him with it when he <laughs> sticks it out there in the screen. I love that it actually has a rubber tip on the end because you know someone's going to po actually poke the screen with it. Hey, wh why don't you uh, you, cro you all crochet or is, uh, crochet some uh, protective uh, <laughs> protective something? Yeah, protective something. Protective something for the end of that. I'm ready, Steve. I'm also ready to finish it move when you guys are ready. Yeah, I'm not, not quite in the uh, comfort zone for ship yep. movement yet. Oh, Tim, I don't know if you noticed, but Argus, or sorry, Herc Zeus just did the yeah, flash she, thing. She's restarting over there. Okay. Was that because of that, or is it the other issue? Right. No, it has nothing to do with what I'm doing. All right, okay. Telestrator okay. is back, back online. Me. Um, yes, yes, the uh, analog one's mind. working too. <laughs> <laughs> How is the telestrator back on? Never well, the computer settled. restarted. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, it's not turning on now. Do you want me to launch the program? You can try. Steve, is that a branching bamboo coral? It's a black coral. Okay. Yeah. One of these we just saw uh, a while ago with that flytrap anemone on it. Those flytrap anemones are kind of cool. I think we were between heteropathies or uh, uh, trisopathies, something like that. Oh. You'll have to come up a bit again. Yep. I'm going to get back uh, out front here eventually. This, this wall looks a lot more interesting than the other wall uh, from a biology standpoint. 
the other wall was cool because you could see like the pillows embedded in the wall. Oh, some people checking in from our previous watch. They wanted to know if we we were able to get that rock. The answer is yes. And this must have kept people up at night. The suspense. <laughs> I slept soundly knowing that rock was safely stowed. <laughs> Me too. Good thing the uh, mystery snip stuck in the slurp happened during daytime hours, otherwise you would have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> well, still not, still not a sample yet. That's true. So, oh, question about the egg casings. Are they only found on specific corals? Are they? Um, no, uh, we find them pretty much on any coral. Um, I haven't seen any on black corals, though. So, I see them on Chrysogorgid corals quite often, um, you know, golden corals. I see them on bubblegum corals. Um, what else? Rarely on primnoids. I don't know why that is, but yeah, kind of those two are the most common. It seems like uh, Chrysogorgia colonies uh, are usually the coral of of, uh, of preference for a lot of things. Uh, crustaceans too will here. lay their Zero eggs, four, five, uh, back or you know th they'll uh, brood their eggs um, within. Uh, oh, the mirror, branches right. and polyps uh, of a Chrysogorgia yeah. colony. Maybe it offers some or conveys some protection, um, or maybe it conveys some. <laughs> in theory, you should be able to get here. Zero uh, four yeah, five chemical, five back. chemical camouflage. Steve, is it working back there for you? It says uh, video is in and connected, uh, but there's just a, a black screen. Black screen, yeah. Yeah. Same. Okay. We had the uh, HD black in here again for a minute. Oh, that was me. Well, that was you this time. Yeah. Roger. That wasn't the actual camera. That was the monitor. I was, I was switching the telestrator. Roger. Were there any um, rock collections last night from uh, 8 to, uh, rather, 12 to 4 that were... Good okay. for amber, good like for a uh, ship move. Okay. What was your speed last time, Sam? Uh, 0 0.3 we've been going. Let's slow it down to 0 0.2 to re Roger. reduce that layback. Bridge, nav. Uh, 5 zero meters bearing 0 0.45, and let's reduce speed to 0 0.2 knots. We can deal with the layback and the faster speed, Steve, but when we stop... Um, if we stop too long, the swing in is... Yeah, no, don't stop. So I, I'm happy to do that point three, but if we, if you want to stop, it's we pay for it because we have more of a layback. Yeah. And then when we stop, we get more than a 20-meter swing. Yeah, we're not going to stop uh, on this slope. We're going to keep going up a little bit more. Okay. Two. He says okay. we're not going to stop, so we'll go point three. So you said last time too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, Subject to change I, without I, notice. I, did, I didn't want to stop. You guys stopped and said I can get that rock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want the rock? We can. Well, put it we'll take the rock. Oh, okay. But if you want, if you just want to challenge yourselves, don't blame science for that. <laughs> we can increase speed to zero point three knots. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, it was a little close and. Um, I mean, it wasn't like super, super close, but it's definitely single digits. Do you want me to maintain 045 heading, Dan? Uh, yeah, I'll try and stay in the box there. Okay. All right, uh, our you goal can, you can for the rest of the this uh, this dive is to make it to waypoint oh, nine. Sorry, guys. That, that would consider that the end of the dive. Waypoint what? Nine. During our watch? No, not no. The end by the end of the dive. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it. Let's see. Go to go to ludicrous speed. <laughs> Point three is pretty on a vertical clip. wall. We're coming up the coming up the wall. Uh. So 
still make it halfway to waypoint eight. There is a particularly interesting slope uh, that goes up to about 1,500 meters in the vicinity of waypoint uh, eight and nine. So that's what oh, I really yeah. wanted to spend some time on. Uh, hopefully the eight to 12 can have the glory. Yeah. yeah, line them up right for it. Yeah, oh, I see that's what ya. we do. You gotta support your friends and colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, we can sit in the lounge and have popcorn and <laughs> enjoy the show. What microwave are you using to make that popcorn? Oh yeah, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we, we don't have a microwave right oh, now. Oh, I guess you could do it old school with a pot and uh, lid, Ooh, right? Ooh, that'd be Ooh, good. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Like a little rake with the kids. And on. Sounds good to me. Imagine we have a microwave on order. That's actually a, my preferred way to make popcorn because then you could put whatever flavorings you like in the butter. You know? Yeah. yeah. Just eat M Ms. Oh, what type of popcorn flavors? I don't know. Okay, I'm I'm hungry. Is it breakfast time soon? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's usually about it. Yeah, we all start talking about food. Food. <laughs> In the old control vans, um, this used to be my favorite watch uh, because for some reason there was just like oh, the vans were a little porous uh, in that some of the exhaust from the uh, galley would seep into the vans right around four or five o'clock in the morning and you'd get like bacon. the smell of bacon <laughs> wafting. <laughs> and Which was uh, pretty painful sometimes when you knew that it was still a couple of hours off. Yep. And then sometimes you would get uh, the smell of cookies at around two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh. Yeah. Freshly baked cookies makes my day. Okay, yeah, it's definitely breakfast time <laughs> yeah. soon. A couple more sciencey questions coming in. Um, do corals have any defense against the sea stars? And then second question is, do Dumbo octopus tend uh, their eggs? Offset there. We can uh, second one try. first. Um, I've never seen one sitting around a, an egg case. Uh, so I guess that's a no. Um, not like the octopuses we saw at Davidson Seamount, uh, you know, last few years or so. Um, those are it's kind of a different setup. Um, Dumbo's will usually just lay their eggs and scoop. Um, it's really no way of really telling how long it takes for a Dumbo egg case to uh, develop either. We we presume it's a long time because it's very cold and uh, you know, metabolisms are very slow down there uh, in the deep sea. Um, for the first question, predators and um, defenses on corals, um, we see sometimes predators preferentially preying on certain types of corals. So let's say the most commonly observed prey items for sea stars, which are usually the primary predators, are primnoid octocorals and bamboo corals. Um, I don't know if there's anything about these two families that make them good prey items. Um, they seem to maybe have defenses. You know, primnoids are scaly and, you know, primarily made out of a lot of calcium carbonate sclerites, but, you know, maybe some of the bamboos have very sharp uh, spine-like sclerites uh, that are thought to be defensive in nature, but it's not really well understood. Um, I want to what the purpose try of those come features up at a is. Constant speed here to okay. Keep uh, Herc in the center of the Argus. Um, but yep. the more likely defense is, if, if any, are probably more chemical in nature. Well. Okay. Um, you know, corals might produce nasty compounds that might be um, unpalatable to predators like sea stars and things like that. So that that's the kind of defenses that I would expect to find if I was uh, uh, looking at these in more detail. Corals. Right. Well, there you go. And then the next question that came in is general for everybody. You can choose to be honest or not. It seems so dark in the control room. Have you ever fallen asleep during a watch? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think pretty much everyone's fallen asleep <laughs> during a watch at, at one point. In, in their lives. It's like if people say they've never been seasick. 
They're lying. No. <laughs> There's two types of people in the world, those who have fallen asleep in the, in the watch and those who lie about it. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually crawled behind the console and had a little nap. <laughs> <laughs> While piloting? No. <laughs> While waiting, though. Yeah. So there you have it. I definitely feel like these morning shifts are uh, are rough, especially the first two hours. Yeah. I feel for the midnight to four crew. <laughs> That's the only watch that I found. Like, it's really hard to make it through the day without having an app if you're on 12 <laughs> to four. Nothing you want to zoom on, Steve? <laughs> I, I want to make the Telestrator work so so I can have the power. I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I we're am the Telestrator. <laughs> we're not stopping. <laughs> we, can, we can zoom. Snap zoom. We can do. Yeah, I mean, it, this looks, it, to me, it looks mostly like rubble. Um, but, you know, I know it's probably encrusted to the seafloor. Not seeing anything like biologically that I really want to zoom in right now, but we're seeing more of these blocks, kind of what we saw on the other side of the. So yeah, exactly. Thank you. Oh, look at that! No, I was talking about the little bit of something right in there. Out. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. when your windshield wiper gets stuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Steve without his telestrator is like Harry Potter without his wand. Uh -huh. What are we going to do? <laughs> hey, we didn't wand. always have a telestrator, so <laughs> yeah. we can make do. We used to have to say squishy purple thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a good one because I know we have some creatives on this watch. How can people in the arts that are interested in science contribute? to an ocean exploration community. To join our Artist at Sea program. Yeah, we do have, um, it's now part of our Science Communication Fellowship. So we've had artists come out and fill the role that Dijon is in right now um, in the van, but also share their art through different mediums. Um, other ships also have Artist at Sea programs. Falcor has a robust program. Uh, but we also have a lot of people in the community who like to watch our live streams and get inspiration from what they're seeing and then share that through their platforms. Um, I know there's also, um, in the last couple of years, there have been several uh, scientists that we've had out who've worked with artists to conceptualize some of their work. Um, like last year we had a scientist. Could slow down for a minute. Okay who studies uh, foraminifera, which are really small and um, kind of hard to... I've got my uh, vertical velocity displayed there. Hard to see and really understand. And she worked with an artist who was able to really help conceptualize some of her work. Um, and gonna, both visually, but also just... I'm slow down and wait for artists to, to get story closer. Tell about okay. Foram, foram behavior and life cycle, things like that. That's really cool. I think, I personally think that creative communication and expression of what we do is key. Yeah. Yeah, you can do all the science in the world, but if no one knows about it and no one can relate to it, then uh, it will be in a, in a vacuum. And then the next question is how can Mechanical Whoa. and electrical engineers help. Look at that V-shaped colony. Ooh, do we see something? Yeah, I just want to do a snap right. zoom. Zoom in there. Yeah, go ahead and push in a little bit, Tammy. This is almost yeah, certainly a, a species or a genus called Calyptrophora. That's good, thanks. And in fact, uh, with this morphology, I can actually narrow it down to just a couple of different species 
within that genus. It's one that I've imaged uh, quite broadly, and I have it in several photo guides. Um, this is probably Calyptra for Clarkii, which is from Stop these coming depths. Up. I'm, I'm okay. just holding it. Okay. okay. I thought you were still coming up. No. Yeah. Pulling on me. Yeah, what you need there, Steve? Uh, any, may I get me any more? Yeah, yeah we can do. Yep, uh, looking good. Bunch of anemones or something all over it, yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> good Hang job, on. all right. Take your stick and away from it. Oh. <laughs> this is one way to stay awake. It's just, unlike the other monitors, you cannot touch these monitors with that. Nope. Roger. What's wrong with the monitors? They're just... No, they're just sensitive. Yeah. They're broadcast wall monitors. Gotcha. And very expensive. Do a nice house down payment on that wall there. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> House down payment where? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Anywhere. Okay, a car down payment for sure. I'm gonna slide to the right for a while. Too. Okay. Or approximately one tank of gas these days. Mm. <laughs> Five Question coming in that I, I'm sure you get a lot. How often do you find something that you've never seen before or something rare? Um, well, right now we're putting eyes on a location that has not been seen before, a newly, newly mapped uh, seamount area. So everything that we see, I don't think other people have seen before this it's part of the exploration all brand new okay coming up again okay uh, five meters a minute okay steve go ahead and try and open it again uh, okay i restarted It might not do anything because it's not doing anything on my side. It says we have to re Yeah, I got no connections. It's black screen. And it says no connection at top too, right? Yeah, disconnected. No servers. Yeah, that's what I'm getting over here now too. Looks like it's going to flatten out there for... A little bit, maybe. Okay. Have to wait for Argus now. Hey team, are we deep enough to see a giant squid? Never seen one. I'd like I'd, to see I'd, one. Th theoretically, yeah. We could be deep enough, but... Aren't they mostly found in the Atlantic? Uh, they could be found anywhere, Yeah. right? The, they probably the have. Pacific they China. probably even looked for more in the Atlantic. That's why more, there are more observations there. But I know that you know the. Uh, you can hold it there for a while. What want. is it? The okay. colossal squid is actually from the Antarctic. Mostly, most of the observations. But uh, yeah, it's not. It's not impossible. You know, if they're. But the, the thing about the deep ocean is that, the, there is fairly similar environmental conditions in all the ocean basins at, at similar depths. So it's not too strange, you know, the 2,000 meters in the Atlantic is not too different from 2,000 meters in the Pacific. Um, certain parts of 
each ocean basin might have different you know, small differences like differences in oxygen at those depths for example or maybe the carbonate chemistry but um, for the most part uh, for highly mobile creatures I don't think it should have uh, all that much of a difference so um, I'm down let's let's see some giant squid <laughs> it is a uh, yeah I don't know I don't know if it's a thing that you know, they just don't, squids generally don't like the vehicle. Usually they do. That's the Telestrator restarting. I'm just going to switch your thing until I have it working over here. that we're using and most ROVs you know, like this you know, research class or working class ROVs they're oriented to help humans see the deep sea not necessarily to attract things like larger animals uh, you might for example want to design a system that has different light arrangements or you know different light uh, setups with different light wavelengths it emits um, you might want to have the ability to have bait potentially uh, to attract an animal uh, if it's predatory, for example. Like I think our drop cams in the lab. Yeah. And yeah. um, I know when the, they were looking for the giant squid in the Atlantic, they actually used a uh, type of bioluminescent. Uh, kind of mi bioluminescent mimicry to attract the animal. So they mimicked uh, prey items of giant squid. Let's uh, come so. down a bit now. Okay. We haven't seen one, but our eyes are open. You just never know. And there are expeditions that have gone out specifically to try and observe giant squids using a variety of techniques like a bioluminescent mimic lure. That's kind of cool. Yep. Looks like a disco ball, if I recall. Not a disco ball, more like a colored strobe. Yeah. We're talking about the same one. Yeah, I think I think that's the same one. A book about a giant squid. Mini. Which one are you thinking of? I mean, like a TV movie out of it. It's written by uh, Peter Brinkley, I think his name is, the guy who wrote Jaws. I don't know. Yeah. We'll look into that. that kind of that. It's kind of like copy paste to, to Jaws to Giant Squid. Just change <laughs> the animal. <laughs> if it worked the first time, just go with it. another one of these sponges that we sampled last night. <laughs> you guys want to catch up now or keep going? You can keep moving. Seventy-five meters to waypoint eight. Good. On track. Are we on track? Yep. We're gonna make it to waypoint nine. We caught up. Yeah. We aren't. But well, yeah. That's up to the next watch. Yeah. This side. <laughs> Hoping they do the right thing. Mm -hmm. oh. Let's see here. Question from. Houston, what is the max depth for Hercules? I believe it's currently 4,000 meters depth. Correct. And then come, down. come down a bit. Yep. Argus, I believe, can go even deeper to about 6,000 meters. Yep. That's right. Yep. So I think um, if the weather holds, which it it's currently showing that it will um, through the day today. It's supposed to be nice and calm 
seas down like uh, end of the day yesterday. Um, at our next site, we might try to do a bit of a deeper dive since it'll probably be one of our last two dives, I would imagine, for this expedition. Um, try and get some additional samples from below 3,000 meters uh, for crust analysis, uh, oh, which is okay. of interest to our science party out here. Uh, we did get a few samples, uh, more than a few, I'd say we two dives worth of samples from below 3,000 meters, but um, sometimes uh, having more is better, particularly in depths where uh, the samples may not be ideal. Some of the rocks we collected were fragments, of small things. So some more substantial samples might be more helpful for those analysis. Got it. So a, a deep dive is in our future. Well, they're all kind of deep, but a deeper dive is in deeper, our future. Deeper, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, it, a lot of that is dependent on the sea state and making sure that it's okay to go deep. Um, front row you might be have a better uh, idea about this but cable tensions have been pretty good this dive yeah we've stayed out of the teens cool so weather is a big factor there yeah so this is our window then today tomorrow uh, and part of Wednesday uh, we're expecting to have very similar conditions to today a little bit faster. Have we ever done a 48 hour dive continuous? 72 hours. It's the longest continuous dive. 76, I believe it was. 76 hours? Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm going to be at the kind bottom. Of moving of this, along the contours yeah. here a bit. Yeah, we are. I'm down at the bottom now. Yep. Might have to. Back up if, if that's annoying, here. we can we can adjust to go more perpendicular. If no, no. Nice. okay, all right. okay. Well, this this looks, looks good though. I mean, going per oh going man. parallel to the contours is useful now and again. Is that a fast moving? Kinda something have to there? come up there. There's a wall of death approaching Argus. I see that. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> Wall of death, dong, uh, dong, dong. Da, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's all, all red in front of Argus. I'll get out in front of you again. Okay. Some more questions coming in. What is the deepest any of you have been in a submersible? Uh, zero for me. <laughs> zero. 70 feet. <laughs> You go first, Steve. Uh, I know, because you're, you're going to win, right? Uh, <laughs> 900 meters was my deepest dive. 900 meters. Mine is 3,700 meters. Wow. Oh. Deepest dive, mid-Atlantic. Mid any, any funny range. stories from your Alvin dive? Ooh. <laughs> Any funny story <laughs> that, that, you that, that I want to share. Appropriate <laughs> Did you to hear share? how I thought about that? I was like, ooh, <laughs> let me take a beat There's or two. There's always a good story. Yeah. <laughs> I, I crossed the equator for my first time. What? In a sub? Uh, no, uh -huh. while on the Atlantis, um, the same expedition that my first sub dive was. It's always been my dream to cross the equator in a submarine. <laughs> Have that <laughs> that talking point <laughs> in my awesome. back pocket. Right? Do you still do the same ceremonies, or is it different when you're? <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm afraid actually. <laughs> what you could do in a submarine crossing the equator? Yeah, did you know when you pause? I was like, huh. It sounds like a crossing ceremony. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> that was totally. Oh, telestrator's working again. You're not oh. really supposed to talk about it. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> And in the telestrator seat, we have... <laughs> Did you just say it was working again? Yep, it's working. No, it's what? Like it's not yeah. working here. Now you're lying. Yeah, you can, you can put it up on the, on the front panel and I'll show them. Secure the... Secure the uh, analog, like analog telestrator. <laughs> Mm 
<laughs> it's under trial mode because it has the tri <laughs> uh, trial mode. <laughs> oh my god! So I have to work with Fingerworks Telestrator, 1999 to 2009. Is that why it crashed? We ran out of uh, free days in our. I don't know. <laughs> So what did I see on that deep dive? That deep dive was to look at hydrothermal vent environments in the mid-Atlantic. So I saw underwater volcanoes in the form of black smokers. You can check those out on Google. And um, lots of chemosynthetic organisms that are thriving off of the chemicals in the water. So. really cool dive experience and to you know be there and see it with my own eyes was pretty pretty special oh how long are your expeditions and how much time is there in between our current expeditions lasting about three weeks long and um, I don't think there's a whole lot of time in between legs of the expedition. Yeah, we usually have one day to demobilize the current expedition and then one day to mobilize the next, so two, two days in port usually. All right. Um, although we had a couple, sometimes we have a couple more. If uh, new vehicles are arriving to onboard on the ship, there are other Thank you. port logistics to sort out. Expedition calendar is on the Nautilus Live website under expeditions. If you want to take a look at what's coming up for the rest of the season, this is actually our first Nautilus expedition of the year. We had a shakedown. Your mic's really far yeah. away, Sam. So. How about now? That's better. Great. Yeah, we've got expeditions running until October, uh, but ROV expeditions running until um, July, I believe. Oh. So you can continue to follow along on Nautilus Live, right? Mm -hmm. Check things out. Oh, hello, Mrs. Smith's fourth grade class in Lacey, Washington. Thank you so much for joining us as we explore the depths of the seamount in the Central Pacific Ocean. Got finger works burned into my brain now. <laughs> <laughs> that is a yeah, an unfortunate downside of <laughs> restarting a telestrator. Oh, it, they it, wanted to repeat it. Won't it forever be there, hopefully. Okay. Trying to working with the DE right now on it. Oh, they wanted to hear all about you explaining the next expeditions. It was hard to hear um, a party line. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah, this is our first um, ROV expedition of 2022. And we have ROV expeditions running until July. She is? Yep. It sounds like she's not. It's really weird. Come on, Espiel. Your microphone backwards I or can't. something? Yeah. Is yeah, bye. Oh, you're I'm muted, station. and that's my microphone picking it up. No, I'm on a spill. Microphone's I can see forward. it going through. It just is, it's really hard to hear. I don't, it's strange. It's given normal levels and everything. I could talk louder. <laughs> <laughs> How about now? 
I hear you just fine. Oh, yeah. maybe you have me turned down. Oh, now I hear you. Whatever oh. you did. That's I think me. Tammy's doing something. Tammy magic. Tammy magic. Tammy magic. <laughs> <laughs> There's a song. Oh, writing that on the list. <laughs> All right. Can you scroll over with a... Uh, high back? High back a little bit. Yeah. Sure. You want to see other waypoints? Yeah, just if you can get the ship and waypoint nine and... and How's that? Oh, yeah. Great. Fabulous. <laughs> Love it. Okay. You want any distances? Uh, no. Well, yeah. What, what are we now to eight? To eight? Yeah. Uh, 288 oh. meters. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um... I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think we can tone it back down to kind of our point two speed. Roger. Uh, and sh maybe shorter steps. Uh, probably end up taking a rock somewhere in the near future, but don't need to stop the ship right now. Aha, rock goals. Okay. Yeah, if we come back to point two, I don't, we'll have less of a layback, so when we do stop, it won't be an issue. That's the plan. Great. Next step will be 20 meters, but we'll have the same bearing, 0 0.45 and 0 0.2 knots. Right. Now, our depth is uh, 2,030. Bridge, Nav. 230. 2,000, Hardy. 2030. Uh, 20 zero meters, 0 0.45, and we can reduce speed to 0 0.2 knots. So just a heads up, I imagine between eight and nine, it's probably going to be pretty intense uh, slope, but that'll be for the next watch. Uh, so I want to take it slow up that. Roger. Yeah, it's looking pretty red in the future there. It's more of a pink, isn't it? More pink. Using uh, our indoor lighting as a guide. <laughs> oh, hello, Friday Harbor biology class. Thank you for tuning in. Friday Harbor, Washington? Yes. Have you been there? I have, it's gorgeous up there. Is that the San Juan Islands? Yeah, it's up in the San Juan Strait, yeah. 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 I think there's like a little research school or something up. I don't remember. Is there a marine lab in Friday Harbor? Yeah. I think I went there for a writing retreat once to work on my dissertation. It's really beautiful up there. Nice. Oh. That's a fun question. Have any of the samples we've collected tried to escape? Funny you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> Happened to us last year. <laughs> Particularly sore subject. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but don't worry, we, we managed to get another sample of that escapee. Are you going to tell us the rest of the story? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to make certain individuals in this room feel bad. <laughs> you can uh, change the names to protect <laughs> the innocent. <laughs> what was escaping now? I forgot. <laughs> we had a few escapees. Last year, with a, we sampled a purple sun star that was thought to be a new species. And a combination of things, but basically it found its way out of the box. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. On its own? On its own. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> How big was it? It was big. It was wow. Like, yeah. And uh, so um, we did find another individual later on in the expedition and we were able to uh, swap those out for uh, scientists for sure. So the answer is yes. Samples have tried to escape in the past. Wasn't I recall it an instance 
Maybe I'm making this up. Uh, Come up a little faster here. Okay. I might have overhanging cliff. Of a Dumbo that was sampled way, way back in the day. That might have escaped from one of the jars. From the jar? Yeah. How did it escape from a jar? It, uh, the, it wasn't it wasn't rotated out Come of position. Ah, uh, okay. So it crawled out of the hose. That makes sense. This was way back in the day. It was 2013 or 14. Okay, that's not way back. That was just like a <laughs> few years ago for some In of Nautilus us. time, that's... <laughs> the before times. Oh. Yeah. The before way back COVID machine. times. Yeah. You're all right now. Okay. Now, somebody said they saw that dive. There was a large rock that prevented the box from closing all the way. <laughs> Oh, now know. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anonymous, anonymous, Dan. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that one. That was an overhanging cliff. Yeah, it was. That was the wall of death there. Yeah. That was very deathy. I keep highlighting wall of death. I hope Shoreside knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, Steve, we just completed a move. Anything you want to uh, grab here? Yeah, we're going to look for a rock, uh, but I don't see anything immediately apparent. Um, okay, we'll continue uh, on. I'll let eagle-eyed Dan uh, let me know what he thinks uh, is breakable or not. All right. Ooh, come up again. Yeah, we're we're dealing with uh, navigation. Sure. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's hold it for a minute. Here, yeah. So. Really come up as well. And step back too if you need. I think we're all right. We're just uh, right dangerously there. close. It's pretty dramatic. Hello, Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. Ooh, Pensacola, Florida. That's where Roman Reigns is from. <laughs> oh, what is that? Is that a jellyfish on my fortune? Where? Oh no, it's a it's a um, a fly trap in a Fly, fly trap an enemy. Fly trap an enemy. Yeah. It's kind of a cool view. Oh yeah. Yeah. Still kind of the same cast of characters we were seeing on the other side of the canyon, but you know it's a uh, it's a bit steeper here. Let's, uh, we'll leave the ship stop for the Roger. shift change. Can I do a DVL reset? I don't think it's going to matter here, but. It won't reset. Yeah, you can reset. Okay. You got only three beams. It, we totally lost it. We'll see if it comes back. Well, folks, it's been wonderful exploring with you all. We're coming to the end of our watch here with Delta Dan and the Arachnopho Band. Quick shout outs at the very end. Thank you, United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, Norway, Netherlands, Finland, Sweden, Puerto Rico, Keep Poland, Japan, <laughs> France, Denmark, like and an Brazil. Okay. Thank you for joining us for our watch. Stay tuned for the next watch. You never know what you're gonna see.
Gabby hid my allergy medicine on me. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully it don't explode again. <laughs> Okay, when we're ready, we'll keep stepping to six, waypoint, oh, eight? Yep, yeah, waypoint eight, we, we're moving ahead. To oh, great. <sighs> how, how big's this step? Uh, I was going to do 20 meters. Sure. What's going on there, Jake? Did they write something down about the ground on Argus? Bob, we're heading zero four five. Zero five four five. I think it's just tilt still. I just turned it off. Oh oh. Like okay. a few, like a minute ago. It okay. hasn't, hasn't updated. Roger. Yeah, there it is. It's back. Okay. <laughs> well, or at least nine. Very good. Very good. Very good. So we've got about two hours of bottom time here. We'll try to try our best to get to uh, waypoint nine or ten. But it'll be interesting. We've got a looks like quite a wall between eight and nine. But that's been the story of this seamount: walls and canyons. Telestrator messed up? Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see here. Finger works. Telestrator has a licensing problem. It says it can't call home. Oh, and geez. So our license uh, <laughs> is not valid, so it's in demo mode. Oh, so awesome. We either do without or we do with the logo on. It's not going out uh, on the web that way. Uh, Maybe so. we can uh, go back to the old. <laughs> do we still have the pointer? <laughs> yes, the stick is right there. Yes, Megan okay. has it. We'll revert back. To the old ages. I do have the stick. There's yeah. a stick? Yeah, the stick the of science. Yeah. The stick of science. Here it is. Oh, wow. Okay. For the your pointing <laughs> needs. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> that's the old school right there. That's that's not, well, yeah. Yeah, we sure <coughs> would like to get rid of that. So we used <laughs> yeah. to have CRTs in here and you couldn't use the laser pointer on them because the laser would bounce off the glass and blind you. Yeah. And then then we got LCD TVs and then you couldn't use a laser pointer because it doesn't even show up on the screen. If you shine a laser at the screen, it just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> I exited out, but it's still up there. It, it will be up there. Oh, uh, if you want to use the Telestrator, you have to have the logo until right. we can get sorted out. Oh, uh, so we can't disconnect? Or it, it says it can't reach the Internet. Okay. Julian's not sure why it can't reach the Internet, and uh, we could, but we're going to wait till after the dive to Might as well try to bring it back up then. So we can at least use it. Hello, Nautilus Live audience. This is the right. 8 to 12 watch logging on. This is Jamie in the comm seat. Good morning, Emil Petruncio, watch lead. Coralie Rodriguez, I'm sitting in the science seat. Good morning, this is Leilani Svan on the data logger seat. This is Megan Putz, your navigator. Uh, Robert Waters, hurt pilot. Jake Bonney in the Argus seat. Dave Robertson in the video chair. Calm seas, calm winds. Is the Telestrator, nor it's normally just in-house, right? We don't, that you can't normally see it on channel one outside? Yeah, that's it, correct. Yeah, yeah. normally. Yeah. So apologies to those bringing that up, but that's, that's always been the norm.
bridge, Nav. Can we make another 20 meter move, 045? Doesn't appear to be any current flow, just looking at these drifters. A little bit. Now, will the current this deep fluctuate, or? If it's tidal. If it's tidal. Yeah. So you get the waves generated by the tide on the slopes. So yeah, very possible. NASA simulation shows internal waves coming all the way down here from Hawaii, from the Hawaiian Ridge. We would be probably not see the effects on this side of the seamount. We would be sheltered. We're on the sheltered side, but there could be some generated locally. So now we'll want to try to hit that steep spot between waypoints eight and nine. Yeah, absolutely. So we have someone asking how far we are from Samoa and if we will ever be doing research in Samoa. <clears throat> we made some dives there in 2019. And I think it's possible Nautilus could be back there. There's some exploration of Rolls Atoll. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're, we're going there next year. Bright red crinoid. Yep, that's the uh, Proisocrinus. I enjoyed a brief stop in Samoa before we departed there for exploration of the. Allen and Baker and Johnston Atoll in 2019. Got, got to see all those flying foxes, the big fruit bats. Ooh. Lots mm -hmm. of them. I would like to see those. <coughs> what about the fruit bats? They have, uh, they're called flying foxes. They're 
they're large, and they uh, yeah they serve them on <laughs> I, I, a they lot do. of islands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they. I almost tried one, but I chickened out. <laughs> you want to try for that one? Yeah. Is this uh, possible to sample that rock? This one. Or try. It's possible to put the manipulator on it. I don't know how. <laughs> It's a good shape. Yeah, yeah, angular. It looks like it might have just tumbled there. Yeah, the treetops were full of them. You could hear them chattering. Yeah, they're on the menu in Palau for sure. Get up there, Jake. Yep. Oh. It's a good size one. Are any of this, either of the big ones on the starboard box is open? Uh, there are already three rocks in E and two rocks in F. But there's only D available, Delta. Let's the try. Smaller box. Hmm. I don't think that'll fit. Let's try for F. It's a big wow. one. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. I don't suppose that would sit on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining a house or living its life in a rock comes falling down <laughs> can't you put it you want to put it on the porch or? well <laughs> uh, i mean that's probably the only place we're going to be able to fit that one based yeah. on what i've heard about the starboard boxes it's pretty large yeah can we zoom in on it porch light on porch light Ooh. oh yeah uh, we could, uh, I guess that we uh, could give it a try if you think it's a good keeper. Uh, can we turn it to? It just looks really altered. I don't think Amber yeah. can use this, so we could we could leave okay. it. Okay, let's leave it. Back where yeah. we found it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. In the precisely the same orientation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you zoom out, Dave. Gonna tumble. Uh, <laughs> it was worth a shot. Dropped it. Too high. He was gonna do that eventually, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I just you know, gave it a nudge. Processes. <laughs> gave, it, gave it a nudge. He sped it up by about two million years. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just hope it. You know, there's no sea cucumber in its path down there. No coral communities below us, so that's all right. See anything here? Smaller? Not. I think it looks particularly angular. I think it's pretty rounded. Yeah. For ferromanganese crust. Yeah, so the rocks we're looking for would be used for dating purposes, so that's an unaltered angular basalt rock, is what we're looking for. Most of the rocks that we're finding are heavily altered. Yep. Yeah, let's check our mic placements. Just a quick reminder to everyone, let's just make sure our mics are appropriately spaced from our mouths to avoid too much interference breathing. Who 
was who was doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Bridge now. Oh, look at that. Shrimp. Can we make a 20 meter move? Zero five zero. Thanks. I love the shrimp because they're such a bright red. You're unexpected. You're not expecting to see that brightness down here. I like the way they swim. Yeah. <laughs> There's one kind of red shrimp that kind of swims a little drunkenly. <laughs> Just sort of sideways, little loops. See that one? No. The sea cucumber? Yeah. No. I'm good on the sea cucumber. I feel like any of these rocks would be hard to get. I think that's a great view from Argus Cam, though. Yeah. So Corley, do you want to uh, remind our audience what type of rocks we're looking for? Yeah, so we're first looking for um, fresh angular results to use for dating. Um, and then uh, I am looking for ferrum rocks with ferromanganese crust, which is what you see. It's this black substance. It's making everything round and weird textures. So we have different scientists looking for different types of rocks. Um, oh, and then we're also looking for rocks with ferromanganese crust to look at the microbes that are in the rocks. Yeah, there's some research going on to see if the microbes play a role in the, what role they might play in the formation of these polymetallic crusts, what ecological services they might be performing. While Coralie's research is focused more on the mineral content. Mm -hmm. The geochemistry of the rocks. I know we probably would have heard, but uh, I didn't. I don't think they've come across any nodule-type things on this crew, uh, d on this dive. It does not appear so. Fish. A fish? Fish? Oh, there's fish. Look it's a fish. small fish. Is, is it fish? an eel? Or is it a halosaur? Oh, good eye. Took me a bit. Huh. Uh, I think it might be a leopard. Okay. 
well, which is a snailfish. What's the difference between a halosaur and an They're eel? Being cooperative. Um, eels are eels, <laughs> and halosaurs are fish. So the cuskiel isn't a fish either. The cuskiel is a fish. All eels are fish. Not all fish are. Are eels. eels. Exactly. Oh, there's something under that rock. A uh, relic canthus or? Um, or no, I don't think that's an enemy. It might be a feather star. Yeah, sometimes common names can be really confusing because they'll call things shrimp that aren't actually shrimp or fish that aren't actually fish or you know, eels that aren't eels. I don't come up with these names. <laughs> you claim no responsibility. No, it's not my fault. I'm just telling you what I know. So is it correct that eels are lacking pelvic fins? Um, yeah, I don't think they have pelvic fin fins. Yeah. I, I was just looking up the major differences between eels and fish, um, besides the elongated bodies that they list that they don't have the pelvic fins that most fish use for stability. Mm -hmm. like this uh, cooperative hunting that has been seen with mores and uh, groupers, I think. Hmm. Bridge oh, yeah. nav. Can we make another 20 meter move, zero five zero? Where the fish will come over and signal the eel that it's time to go hunting. Hmm. That eel will help flush out fish from nooks and crannies. I haven't heard of this. This is really cool. Yeah. There might be another species of fish that's learned a trick too, I'm not sure. Well, we haven't looked at some biology in a while. Let's take a zoom on this little fuzzy coral. So we have a bathypathies down in the lower right. And what we're going to zoom on looks like it might be a Chrysogorgia. Yeah. And then there's a feather star on the underside of the rock. Talk on SPO, bro? Yeah. Sorry. I was drinking coffee and we did Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. So in the branches of this Chrysogorgia, there's a little squat lobster called Europtychus. We almost always see squat lobsters in the branches of Chrysogorgia corals. Why do they hang out there? Uh, it makes for a nice little home. The coral protects the squat lobster and the squat lobster can get up off the, the ground and gather food. Take a nap maybe? Yeah, mm -hmm. looks like a really comfy napping place. <laughs> Does it help keep the coral clean of debris and things like that? I'm sure it would assist in that. Like if anything got caught in the branches, it's advantageous to the squat lobster to keep its home tidy. Ooh, it's a little isopod. Oh, 
He's gone now. Hey, okay, moving on. We have someone asking about the instrument uh, referred to as a sextant on the porch and what that does. <clears throat> it's a uh, deep sea camera. So uh, we use it as a still camera to capture uh, photos and we put it on the porch. It used to be up on the light bar um, up top looking somewhat down, uh, but we put it down low uh, to kind of get up close and personal with some corals and sponges and other biology. So we can stick it right up into a coral, get a nice close-up shot. That's very useful. Oh. Yay? Yeah, let's go for checking this one out. So this looks like a bubblegum coral. Ooh. So the scientific name is Paragorgia. And then in the branches you have a snake star in the family Uriality. Okay, zoom in, Dave. I think this is the first bubblegum coral that we've seen, right? Yeah, definitely the first one we've seen for this watch. I'm not sure about the other watches. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised. Usually when we see those big, um, dense coral communities, we see lots of bubblegum coral. Uh, it's called bubblegum coral because of the nice pink color and the ends of the branches have these sort of round bubble gummy looking club structures where there's a bunch of polyps all together. This one has its polyps retracted so you can't see all those polyps but you really do get a good sense of the lumpy bubble gummy texture of this coral. Hubba bubba. <laughs> It can sometimes be difficult to tell these Paragorgia apart from the Hemichoraliums, the pink corals. They can sometimes have the exact same coloration and not all Paragorgia have these very large um, rounded bubblegum ends to their branches. So they can sort of disguise themselves as possibly being Hemichoraliums because it's very challenging for annotators to differentiate them. But there are a couple little tricks that I use. Uh, we've noticed that near the base of the coral, it tends to be a little more yellow um, because the skeleton of this coral is, is soft. Um, if you catch this coral in some prop wash, it will move, uh, unlike the Corallium corals, which have a calcium carbonate skeleton, um, their skeleton is bright pink or to white, so the base of the coral won't have this yellow tint and it won't move in any sort of current. Bridge nav. Can we make another 20 meter move? Zero, 050. Zero. I'm good on this coral. Cool up. There's a big coral over there on that boulder. It looks like it's bright yellow. So this looks like a bamboo coral that we didn't see um, 
in our last watch. So we saw a lot of different kinds, and this is a brand new kind. Um, this one looks like Corrado Isidinae S1 clade. That's what Steve is saying. First observation of the dive. Nice. Yeah, these lemon le yellow S1 clades stand out. They have these long, leggy branches and a beautiful lemon yellow color. There's something in its branches. Yeah, it looks like there's there's probably something in the branches. Uh, odds are. An Argus view shows how sheer this wall is. Wow. Oh wow, yeah. I think it it doesn't look that steep when you're looking no. through a Hercules eyes, but yeah, it is is it a bit steep. It's probably a bit hikeable, like if you were to walk up the side, mm -hmm. but it, it would definitely be a challenge. I've been to the same site in the submarine and in an ROV with Hercules and Alvin, both within yeah. a week, like exactly the same spot. And it's like, looks totally different, huh? like completely different. And really? the submarine is just like the, the scale of the thing is like, crazy big and everything in ROV looks flat you know that's so <laughs> weird <laughs> yeah so there's uh, an enemy? some anemones yeah Very cool. You good on this guy? Yep. So, carry on. Blob. Oh, it is very blobby, isn't it? Yeah, Go for blob. Go for blob. Dot com. <laughs> Black. Black coral. Oh, it's the bathopathies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looked blob-like. It looked <laughs> blob-like. It was tricking my eyes. Look at, no look at. Oh, that's a good view. So this is a black coral called Bathopathies. Right behind it on the rock is a Metallogorgia melanotricus with its snake star, Ophiocreus oedipus. Zoom in, Dave. So bathypathies corals, they look very feather-like. That's what makes them very distinctive and easy to identify. As we have this close-up, you can see that the polyps have six tentacles, making them hexacorals, unlike the other corals we are looking at, which are octocorals, which have eight tentacles per polyp. Black corals' tentacles are also not pinnate, meaning they don't have s sort of feather-like structure to them. And the black corals have two longer tentacles and four short tentacles per polyp. I'm good on this coral whenever you are ready. Get back up. Bridge now. Can we make a 20 meter move? Zero five zero. Coming up, Jake. Coming up. There's another. 
Yeah, there's another metallogorgia. Metallogorgias are uh, pretty cosmopolitan across the deep ocean. We see them lots of places oh, yeah. um, in the Atlantic, oh. across the Pacific. Cucumber. So they are a very common species and they always have the snake star. Yeah. So Megan, why are there so many different colors that we see in these corals in a place that presumably they can't see the colors? So color itself is not particularly important down here because you can't see it. Um, so color is gonna be caused by other things. Um, so it's not advantageous to be a particular color at this depth. Um, red, however, for example, uh, can be advantageous because it's the first wavelength of light to attenuate in seawater. So things that are colored red will be harder to see. That's why you see a lot of the shrimps and other animals being a red color. Um, but things like, you know, your purples or your yellows might be caused by chemicals in the tissues of the organism that might make it not so tasty for predators. Mm. And the color is not important, but the, um, the flavor or the thing that that chemical does is important. We have a question about the relationship between basket stars and snake stars and how closely related they are. Um, they are pretty closely related. Uh, the difference being how the arms are. So basket stars have many branches to the arms um, and that creates basically this basket looking structure. Whereas snake stars, their arms do not branch, um, but in both cases, both snake stars and basket stars, their arms can articulate a lot. They can curl and coil uh, in almost any direction. Um, let's zoom that yellowy one. I think that might be a uh, staropathies. Oh, there's two. Oh, there's three. Three. Is that a crinoid? Oh. Yep, so there's two crinoids. There is this yellow coral that's actually a black coral. And this is it. the long one was a bamboo coral, but now it's covered in zoanthids. So is the coral itself deceased? 
Yeah, so the original coral is gone, but new coral has colonized. There's also a sea cucumber in the back. Yep. Yeah. It's a nice little nook for biodiversity. The shrimp. Yeah. So this is a nice little uh, black coral called Staropathies. It looks similar to Bathypathies, but its branches have side branches. Mm. And they come in colors between like sort of a brown to this yellow. Can we zoom the uh, sponge that was behind this rock? On top of the rock? Yeah, right yeah. on top of the rock. Looks like a vase. Oh, oh, oh. look at that. Oh, that's wow. cool. Hey, zoom in. So this coral that we're looking at um, is a hemichorallium. And if you remember that bubblegum coral we were looking at before, I think you might agree that these look very similar, but they're very different. And then the sponge in the background is a Walteria sponge. It's a type of euplectelid sponge. So a sponge in the family Euplectelidae. And it has this really wonderful vase structure, and they always have sure. these side um, projections. It'd be nice if we could slowly pan up the sponge to the top. It's just a really nice. Oh, yeah, it gets that. like smaller at the top. <laughs> it's like an underwater Christmas tree. So mm -hmm. this is Walteria um, CF Lucardi. So it, it looks like Walteria Lucardi. There's another sponge called uh, Ulterior Fleming Eye. Uh, that one has a structure on the body that is a little more squared. You see how this one has these sort of more circular openings okay. along the whole wall of the sponge body. But the other one, it's smaller openings and they're more square. It looks like there might be a shrimp or a polychaete in the inside. I see, yeah. We often see a lot of associates with these Walteria sponges. Is that because there's a lot of room in there for them? Yeah, they, the sponge provides a lot of shelter for organisms. Quirinoids like to land on them. Brittle stars like to wrap their arms around through these little holes or on the branches. That zoom is so good, you can see the antenna on the polychaete. Yeah. It looks so fragile. He's coming out. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're just poking his head out. You can do it. <laughs> just checking us out. Um, so if you were to, you know, grab this, it would actually be kind of soft. And, and swish in your hands and then spring back into its shape. It looks like it would hurt if you tried to grab this. Um, the spicules in this sponge probably wouldn't stab you too bad. Too bad. Uh, <laughs> I mean, some of them might. Like you just get, it's basically fiberglass, right? So oh. you get a piece just the right way. It, it wouldn't be pleasant, which is one of those reasons we always wear gloves when we're handling any sort of organisms that we collect. You never know if they'll have um, gla shards of glass that might get into your hand or stinging cells that might mm. sting you. So it's always good to protect yourself against that. And also you don't want to contaminate any of your samples with your DNA. Something's happening in the background. Sea spider? It looked like a spider, yeah. but clear. Well, then a cucumber. A right. clear spider. It's behind the sponge now, I think. Uh, I don't see it. Yeah, I think we'll need to keep trucking. Beautiful spot. Yep. 
Nice little grouping of corals there. And a couple different sea cucumbers in the background too. Though I feel like I've seen a lot of sea cucumbers lately. Nav. Can we make a 20 meter move, zero five zero? It's like a pretty, oh no, it's just lights playing on the sediment in the Argus view. I thought there were more corals to the right of Argus, but I think it's just a, like a halo. Yeah, just sediment. Is that something? Dark uh, shadow, I oh. think. Yeah. Something here, too. Oh, and it looks like the spiral of an Aritagorgia the right but it didn't have any of the little things <laughs> sticking out so there's a, a spit of diadema urchin and then on the left side there's that umbellopathies so another kind of black coral i remember this one because it looks like an umbrella so it's umbella <laughs> I'm good in this coral, if you right. want to move on. So we are outside the boundaries of the monument right now, correct? Correct. Inside the EEZ.
And do you mind elaborating a little bit about the EEZ for those who might not know? Exclusive economic zone, 200 miles offshore. It's U.S. territory. And there is more area in the U.S. EEZ than on the land. This is a big chunk of American territory that needs to be explored. Oh, look at that. We've got, we've mapped about half of it. We can just a little bit less. Look at it as we pass by. Yeah, drive by. So in, Dave. these are a bunch of metallogorgia, and then we have a sacrocalyx glass sponge. So this is another sponge in the family Euphlectelidae. So related to that Walteria sponge, but looks completely different. So sponges can come in all shapes and sizes and forms. Some are on stalks, some are vases. So this is a stocked sponge. That opening at the top is called the osculum. I think that's a really fun word to say. Okay, zoom out, Dave. There are a lot of metallogorgia around here. Bridge nav. Can we make another 20 meter move? Zero five zero. So here we're looking at a stickopathies, another type of black coral. This black coral is very whip-like. We made a collection of this earlier in the cruise. It was very difficult to cut. Oh, this is the one. <laughs> it's like kind of mesmerizing the way it's just wiggling. Yeah, so the black corals have protonaceous skeletons that are very flexible but extremely strong. Did you take numbers? Yep. A swap? Short. So maybe the next step could be a little bit more like zero six zero, just bring us further towards the steep. Yep, sounds good. We can do that. Steep part. Uh, did I take number? Oh wait, no. I need to take another set. I'm gonna take another set. Numbers quick. Oh, is that zero six over there? This is zero six zero. Oh, zero five. Zero five zero gets us right to yeah. the center of that Perfect. steepness. Yeah. Oh, look how pink. Oh, can we check out that yellowy coral? Yellow when you're ready. So what I think is going on here with this coral is it used to be a, either a hemichorallium or a paragorgia, but it's been colonized by parazoanthids.
anyone zoom in, Dave? Yeah, so you can see this yellow part is a different type of coral versus the, the lighter white color part. I'm looking at the ends of the branches to see if how many polyps are out, out there at the ends. So I think this might be hemichorallium. There's only they usually have pairs of polyps at the ends of the branches, whereas Paragorgia have more than two. Actually, wait, now I'm seeing three. So this is a white Paragorgia. It's very, very fine uh, in the way the branches are. And it's been colonized with this yellow zoanthid. And in the branches, there's a snake star. Yeah, come down from here. That was a good enough view. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Numbers are good. Numbers are high. So a lot of times, uh, these paragorgias, they, they can come in colors from white to like dark red. And sometimes within the same species, that color can vary. Zoom out just a bit, Nav, and see uh, how much we've covered it in the past hour. Get a feel for our progress towards waypoint nine. Let's see. So this looks like another sack of calyx. Bridge nav. Okay. Uh, can we make another 20 meter move, zero five zero? So we came on right just west of waypoint seven, I think, right? Yeah, so like right over here yeah, was the beginning of our watch? I think so, yeah. So yeah, it looks good for making making our way to nine or close to it. What time do we have to leave the bottom? About ten. Maybe a little later. Let's see. That depth at waypoint nine. Thirteen. Yeah, we've got about three hundred twenty meters left to the wall ish. Probably want to move as quickly as possible if we want to get there. Just to get to the wall? Yeah. All right, let's keep trucking. Looks like we have some new viewers tuning in. Love to see the global map. Australia, South Africa, Japan, um, many from the US, the UK, and Europe, Hawaii. Hello to everyone. Got a good crowd today. It's 
So they're joining us for the final hour of bottom time on this exploration of Seamount C, an unnamed, unexplored, previously unexplored seamount, just northwest of the boundaries of the Kingman Reef Pomara Atoll unit of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. So that's about a 50 mile uh, in a box uh, around Kingman Reef Pomara Atoll. That's a no-take zone. We had a permit to collect some specimens on dives within the monument boundaries. Now we're outside the monument. Um, about 30 or 40 miles northwest of it. And this has been an interesting seamount to explore. Lots of steep features, lots of corals, some interesting sponges. We collected one on our last, on our uh, eight to midnight watch that is not in the animal guide that's published by NOAA Ocean Exploration. Is that a little sea star? A sea star? Yeah, let's go for that. It might be a really tiny hymen aster. Zoom there, Dave. Yep, that's what it is. It's a oh, little tiny hymenaster. It's super cute. Yep, so small. And then they grow up to get big and slimy. <laughs> is this a slime star then? It is a slime star. That's very coincidental because across Nautilus Live social media networks today, you can see some video of the previous Slime Star with some more explanations. So if you're interested in this critter, after the dive, go check us out at Nautilus Live on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. That's a good enough view. Good. Yeah. Seen some very interesting geology Bridge during now. this ascent. Oh, there's something over there. Can we make a 40 meter move, zero, five, zero? Maybe a sea cucumber. Thanks. Ah. Do we want to look at it? Yeah, we can Let's look at it a little bit. Yeah, a little flyby. Flyby zoom, yeah. Yeah, flyby cucumber viewing. This one's a nice big fat one. I think of more interest would be this coral that is up in the upper right. Okay. The one straight ahead? Yeah, yeah, the straight ahead one, that one's alive. Wanna get a zoom, Dave? So this is a bamboo coral. Looks like it's unbranched. We saw how many different types of bamboos last night? Oh, so um, like at six. least six. Yeah. At least six on that wall. Were there any that would interest Mary? Uh, we did try to make a collection of one that she would have liked, but... Um, didn't quite work out. It didn't work out, yeah. It was in a really awkward spot. Well, luckily she'll be able to use the footage from this entire trip towards her research to into bamboo corals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We definitely got really good footage of that one that we attempted to make a collection of. And even if we didn't collect samples, um, she says having the video and close-ups of the corals is really helpful and useful for her.
And one of the things I love about being on the Nautilus is learning about all the specific interests that everyone is studying. Um, it's just so fascinating. Diverse team, yep. Paragorgian? Yep. Actually, this one might be a hemichoralium. Oh. No, they're really hard. They're super tricky. They catch, they get me all the time. Oh. So it looks like the ends of the branches Is only have paired polyps, not groups of three or more. Yeah. They can be the exact same color and then right here where the, the skeleton is bare, it's light pink. If it was Paragorgia, it'd be like yellowy. Mm. Hmm. And it's a nice view of that snake star's arms. They're not going anywhere. No. Nope. <laughs> They're really difficult to get off. Like, even if we made a collection of it, like, and you're trying to separate the specimens for preservation, it's so difficult to get them to let go. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Good. Could you drop a target where Herc should be, like, in the middle of that wall? Just to see a time and distance. No, I mean, uh, the one up ahead of us between eight and nine. I thought you told me to drop a target. Yeah, I, on, on that wall, the steep oh, okay. part of that wall. <clears throat> yeah, like... Kind of in the middle of that steep area. Right. Half hour, okay. Three different cucumbers? Yep. It's quite the cucumber garden. Oh. All different shades. Yep, different shapes and sizes. Cucumbers for all. <laughs> No angular rocks, unfortunately. Well, I didn't say it was rocks for all. I said cucumbers. Pathy, pathy. Yeah, you got it. I'm learning. You're going to be an expert. You're going to be better than me at this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jake can make the next animal guide. Yeah, it'd be like brown coral, green <laughs> coral, <laughs> big coral, little coral. <laughs> One coral, two coral. Might be coral. <laughs> Blob. <laughs> Blob. <laughs> 
Let's take a quick look at this one. Okay. So it looks like it might be a bamboo with all of its polyps retracted. Can you zoom in, Dave? Yep. They look, they look kind of funny with their polyps retracted, don't they? Yeah. Little, little stubby bumps. <laughs> How often do the polyps retract? And what, what is the workings of that? Um, they usually retract when they get disturbed and they'll be out when they're, you know, trying to feed, which is most of the time. So maybe something bumped into this coral before we got here and it retracted its polyps. Ugh. Bridge, Nav. Can we make another 40 meter move, zero five zero? Yeah, and Mary might know a little bit more about this, but the different ways that the polyps look when they've retracted um, can help identify some of the coral uh, types. Sky floating. Oh, I think it's another cucumber. It's a cucumber. You zoom in there, Dave. It's just floating along. Daily commute. Yep. Mm. <laughs> it looks so regal. So a lot of these sea cucumbers in the deep sea will will make nice swimming movements to move from places. Uh, they'll just drift in the current and they'll settle down to have another meal and they'll take off and go somewhere else. Okay, let's, we've got to move on, right? Yeah, we've right. got to move on. Could we s maybe speed up the, uh, speed up the moves to like, uh, maybe 0. 0.4 knots or? I'm um, sure I can do that yeah. in the next one. So I've been making 40 meter jumps instead of our regular 20 so we can get yeah. moving faster. But I want to also be cautious because this train can come out of nowhere on you. As we yeah. saw last watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to have to stay out ahead and probably won't be able to yeah. stop as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We really want to try to get up to the steep wall and if possible get close to waypoint nine. That'll be a pushing it. But uh, I think we might be able to go to 10 10. Okay.
You want to go for that blob? Yeah, let's go for blob. You gonna zoom in, Dave? There. Another it's sea cucumber. Uh, is it alive? Yep, it's just dirty. It's very dusty. <laughs> It's got all sorts of like little shells and things stuck to it. Mm -hmm. Camouflage? Yeah. You can't tell it apart from, you know, sediment. Nice. All right, come on. Looks like the selected target is the one behind us. Maybe we could select the wall as the big fish. I the wall is selected. Huh. I'm seeing target no. name is 1908. Well, uh, high pack is just being silly. Huh. It was the one selected on the map part, but it was not selected on the side Ooh. this way. Hmm. Oh, nice. This is another halosaur. Try to get head and, head and shoulders. Oop. Oh, might take Stay off. Stay still, you. So this looks like a Aldrovandia. It doesn't have any scales on its nose. I love these fish. They're really adorable. Just trying to get away. Yeah, uh, we'll uh, let them go. As they are <laughs> wont to do, yeah. That is a steep drop. Yep. You know it's steep when it looks steep and hurt. So you can think about like if you go to the Grand Canyon and you take a picture of it mm -hmm. as opposed to like being there and looking over the rim, you know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's way Whole different new experience. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Bridge nav. Can we make a 40 meter move zero five zero at point four knots? What's that? There's like a little shadow. 
fish. Lower. Cuskeel. Hmm. I think I'm at the end of my end yeah, of the tether. Yeah, you're yanking on me. Uh. Yep. Looks like the wall starts to come around, so we'll come up right close to it again. It's kind of bending to the right. Yeah. I once spent an entire day at the south rim, rim of the Grand Canyon. About uh, 14 hours I've spent there. And for about two hours, I sat on the edge of the, the rim of the canyon with my feet hanging over, just looking at the Grand Canyon. I've I've hiked down into the Grand Canyon a few times. Have you? Yeah. On the Bright Angel and the South Kaibab Trail yeah. and the the Hermit's Trail. Yeah. Can you camp there? Yeah. Wow. I love camping. That'd be a Great spot. Lots of scorpions there. Oh. <laughs> okay. No thanks. Not <laughs> You're saying. real sullen. <laughs> thanks just, for that. Just a warning. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to go out at night with a, you know, with a uh, ultraviolet flashlight, and you can really see them like everywhere. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think scientists are still unsure of why they have UV lighting, most scorpion species. Maybe they just want to look cool. Yeah. We were at Mather Point, the south rim, and uh, I saw, since we spent all day there, it was a job, I got paid to be there. Uh, we spent all day there, I saw what most people saw of the Grand Canyon, which was a bus would drive up. A whole yeah. bunch of people would, <laughs> would get off the bus bunch of tourists get off the bus, take pictures, say, oh, wow, big hole in the ground. <laughs> after, about, after about 15, 20 minutes, back on the bus, away they go. Ten minutes later, another bus shows up. Bus load of German tourists. They get out. Look around, take a bunch of pictures, say, wow, what a hole in the ground. Turn around, get back on the bus. And, and that happens endlessly all day long. <laughs> and most people's experience with the Grand Canyon is this 15 or 20 minute look, wow, look at that, and then back on the bus. Oh man, Google says there are also tarantulas found throughout the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> I retract my camping statement. Coming up a bit. I think I'd prefer the tarantulas. <laughs> if you want a job that'll keep you in shape, you work at the the. The uh, lodge down in the down by the base of the canyon. Are you gonna hike those, in there? Yeah, yeah. They, the people that work there like <laughs> they hike up and down the canyon like twice a week. Oh my oh, god! Wow. <laughs> so it's it's a mile elevation over nine miles. <laughs> That's a hike. Yeah. There's some more stickopathies. Hmm. Bridge now. Can we make another forty meter move zero five zero? Is that a little shrimp? It sure is. 
So the shrimp is in the family Aristidae. There are lots of little red shrimps down here. We're coming upon some more angular-ish looking rocks. So what do the red shrimp eat? Um, probably other smaller crustaceans, like copepods, maybe some polychaetes. Um, there was some video of a shrimp taking it out of fish, so that could happen. Interesting little summit. Probably not a summit, just a little ledge. Yep. yep. You guys, I have a record failure on both Cynodex. I need to stop them both down and start them up again. Uh, okay. okay. That's just a recording. We'll still have all the video we need, right? Um, we're not recording any video right now. Right. A big boulder. Yes, yeah. it is. With a uh, little coral. <laughs> it's a small bathy pathies. There's some stickopathies. Uh, can we zoom the coral that's in the nope. lower left? Too busy, sorry. No, oh, okay. Then we can just look at it. So, Lailani, while the uh, video recording is down, maybe we can do some extra screen grabs, more sure. frequent. Yep. Yeah. Megan, we have a question about uh, corals' circulatory systems. Okay, we are recording again. Um, oh, they don't thanks. really have a circulatory system. They don't have hearts. Um, their bodies are mostly, or their tissue is mostly water, um, and their skeletons can range in material from carbonate to protein. Um, yeah, but it's not like they have hearts. Right. You kind of yanking on me again. Oh, okay. In a lot of yeah, colonies, they do share resources, so they do have like the means to transport resources from one polyp to another polyp within a colony.
footprints now. Can we make another 40 meter move, zero five zero? Fish, oh look at that fish. Yeah, that's a halosaur. Halosaur? Halosaur, super cute. Close to the rock again. Yep. Do you have time to pan left and see if one of those rocks looks grabbable? Uh, smaller. Uh, not looking very angular. Yeah. Yeah, we might be able to find something in place that might be good coming up soon. Oh, what's that? That looks like a tube anemone, one of those serianthids. You want to look at it quick? Uh, just a drive-by. No, just a drive-by. Drive I'm coming up. Yeah, we're getting close wow. to the rock here. Yep. Yeah, pretty major. Coming up pretty quick. And you, you got a move happening here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's just Come move quickly. Up there, Jake. Coming up. Wow, that's... Some wild looking geology there. Yeah, you need to get out in front. Yep. What are we moving at? The ship? Uh, zero five zero. Oh, okay. That's fine. Looking like we're getting over the top of it. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just never know. Well, yeah, sometimes you've got currents working against you. So. Yep. Is that that clade one again? Yep, the S1 clade. S1. It's hard no. to imagine anything steeper than this. Sand ripples. Thank you. 
bridge now. Can we make a 20 meter move, 050? All right, so I'm gonna slow our moves a little bit, uh, just because I know crazy stuff is coming. Yep. Emil, could you toggle Corley's mic off, SPL, please? Thank you. There's an Arita Gorgia. Arita Gorgia. about this rock over here? Oh. Wondering how big that might be. Um, I don't know about those ones. Just looking for something angular. No, those look... Those don't look good enough. No. This might be, yes. Yeah, some of the good ones are too big. Where's your favorite sea cucumber? Hmm. Oh, that's a, a round one. Sure is. Yep. Rotund. Mm. Plump. <laughs> Blob. <laughs> Blob. <laughs> There's a Cliptrophora. That's that coral that right in the center screen. It looks like a small Ritigorgia. Is Argus swinging towards the ship? Yep. Fish. Ooh, that's a good size fish. Yep. So this is a rat tail fish. You still busy over there, Dave? Or? Or is it a cuscale? No, it's uh, a cuscale. The rocks okay. made it, it look zoom. like it had a dorsal, dorsal fin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is a nice big cuscale. now. Can we make a 20 meter move, 050? Shrimp. So many shrimps.
Let's take a look at this coral real quick. Okay. Zoom in here, Dave. So this is a bamboo coral. It's got a couple of different associates, a crinoid, brittle star, that predatory jelly. Looks like the branch points are originating at the nodes, so those black bands. Predatory jellyfish. Yep. I just kind of want to like bop it a little bit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> they seem to really like these bamboo corals, I've, but I've also yeah. seen them on uh, Aritagorgia. Thanks, that's good nice. deal. Move along. Come on. Thank you. Trying to keep my eyes open for a nice rock. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing the same. Bridge now. We have down here. Can we make a 20 meter move, 050? Maybe take a quick look at that one. Yeah, just a reminder, I don't think we want anything too big because yeah. we yeah. only have space for a small rock in starboard D. Yeah, that looks a little Yeah, little that large. Looks a little large. Yeah, that, would large. Be a, that would be a porch rock. Yeah. <laughs> or a porch rock. Mm -hmm. If we put a rock on the porch, can we no longer open the forward box? Uh, you, could, you can throw it back behind the arm. In the, oh, okay. In the armpit area. <laughs> okay. Be careful. I mean, it depends on what the that what it looks, looks like. way too big for that. Yeah, it looks kind of it looks like uh, affixed to that other rock too. Mm -hmm. it might be. Yeah. I mean, if you put it on the on the front porch there, you can 